What's up, Collider Live fans? It's not Christian Harloff, it's Josh McCuga on a Tuesday. <laughs> as we used to call it back in the day, two for Tuesday, which was, I don't know, they just called it on a radio station in Pittsburgh. I think it was like, if you wanted one lettered skin and song, you got two. <laughs> and guess what? You're getting three hosts today until Christian Harloff gets his teeth done being cleaned. Is it the dentist, I believe? Yeah. Um, he's not sure an anti dentite bastard, as you would say on an episode of Seinfeld. We got Cody in the booth. We got Alex in there getting some time codes. We've got Roxy Stryer. We've got Mark Riley. Um, before we get into today's uh, news, Roxy yelled at me before the show started and just said, Nobody talk to me! As she was posting her uh, selfies. And did you get it out, Roxy? Did you get the selfie That's out? That's what makes a good show. Right. Broadcasting skills, which is making everybody afraid of speaking to me before we start. Right. Very so totally. actually, I wasn't even tweeting. I was just saying... Oh, don't, don't talk to talk to me. Got it, got it. You went full Steve Harvey yeah. on the whole situation. <laughs> don't, no, don't look, don't me, look in the at eyes. me. Don't look at me. Don't talk if to me. If you pass by me, just keep yeah. on walking. Yeah. Your keep bowl of walking, Josh. <laughs> your bowl of green M and M's are in the green room. Thank yes. you so much. Green yes. M and M's, green room. Oh, Speaking because you green. wanted that. Green. I said red Skittles. <laughs> Skittles are the worst. You're you're what? the worst. Skittles are the worst. You're the worst. No, I'm not. Skittles are the best. No, I mean, not. you're right. You're not the worst, but Skittles are the best. <laughs> no, they're not. There's it's a t- here's the thing. M and M's are the worst. I, they all taste the effing <clears throat> same. Okay, well, I don't eat chocolate because I'm peanut I'm I'm allergic M&Ms. to it. Yeah. Okay. Peanut M and M's are fantastic. Yes. Little mini M and M's. Yeah. Uh, regular M and M's, just kind of like little chocolate bites. Whatever. Yum. But I had to grow up eating all of the non-chocolate candies. And I feel like Skittles were always the ones I got on Halloween, and they're the worst. Like, they're they're just we, not good. This is, like, it's an just a sugar issue. Yeah, it's just not good. No. Ish. Starburst. Now, if you want to if you want to throw me a pink Starburst. But have you seen what they've th- been doing with Starburst recently? Have, been, have you been paying attention to this? Uh, no. 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 It's just, what, it's, it's, <laughs> should what I they? be? Mm-hmm. Is this, like, the Mueller investigation? Are, are you Star up to date with the latest Starburst news? Yeah. yeah. No, you're not up to date. They have made Starburst unwrapped. And so you now get, like, if you go to the a movies log? and you get those bags of Starburst, they come unwrapped, probably so you don't make noise during the movie, but they taste stale oh. because they're not wrapped. Mm. It's very strange. I got real excited, and then when you said stale, so, I'm like, Ugh. I no, thought no, it was a great idea, too, because I was like, what's the worst part about Starburst? That you have to unwrap them during the movies, and mm. you're like, yeah. Yeah, but the best part about a stale star Starburst, and go ahead and fight me on this one, Cody, if you want. <laughs> Because I heard you Bring getting it. really, really upset about Starburst news in there. I'm just really passionate. Um, is that <laughs> there? It's twofold. One, the best part about Starburst is when they are stale, you get to you get to keep them in your mouth until they like dissolve into like the delicious. Candy. These yeah. are stale the other way. They are too soft. Oh, even They're, better. No, Wait a minute. No, no, they. It's That's like, not stale then. No, yeah. well, they taste old. Like uh, no, okay, sorry. Man. So there's that, the there's that funk about them when you. Eat yeah, them. stale's not the word because you're right. Stale Starburst get that hard. These taste like. Like if you poked it, it would spill. Oh, ooh, I like ooh. that. No, but you here's don't. here's no, the thing that don't. I would love is if it got warm and the whole Starburst thing just turned into one glob of Starburst, and you kind of get all the flavors together. You get a little bite there, a little bite there. Maybe people don't like me on that one, or a log of Starburst. Like if it came in the thing and they all melted together, it'd be like a Tootsie Roll, you but ever, a multicolored Starburst. You never did this. You melt Starburst and I make shapes out of them. Really? Uh, Put them in the microwave. No, my parents love me. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I had friends. No, I'm kidding. It actually sounds kind of fun. Should we do a little arts and crafts of uh, well, was, Star Wars? It was harder to do than you're giving me credit for. Right I bet now. it is. It's a little challenging. Okay, got it. I didn't even use the mold or anything. I, I did it. By you hand. went by hand. Thank you. Well, you know, before we get into, there's a lot of news going on today. Game of Thrones. The world has erupted. Shockingly, the fans are upset with something about Game of Thrones. Mm. <laughs> Huge shocker. Mm. Uh, we've got an Aladdin trailer. Uh, we've got some amazing guests coming in the 11:30 hour. Mm. We got Lorraine de Clamont, uh, Tonore, Tonore, yeah, Tonere, uh, who is the director of Mustang, mm-hmm. and we've got the star of the Mustang, Ma- Matthias Schoenartz. Yes, which I believe, if you pronounce it correctly, be Schoenartz. But that's like they wouldn't. Uh, it would also ju- be Matthias if you were, I think, pronouncing it correctly. But I think it's Matthias. Okay. But I could be wrong. I don't. Well, I don't know if let's... you're right or wrong, and I can't wait to talk to Are you. Are you insulting it. me? No, no. I am. And I'm not even getting a chance to defend myself. This movie, I cannot wait for us to like shine a uh, light on this movie. Okay. It is 
so effing good. Awesome. Like I was blown away. I think that that's what I love about Collider Live, and we and we've gotten before. Some people are like, well, "How do we? How do you not know about this indie? How am I telling you guys about this indie?" We have to. We see a lot of movies. Yeah. yeah. And this is one that if we weren't having them in, I don't know if it would have come across my radar. Yeah. And I'm so excited like yeah, I, and it's, it's so it's, good it's starting to hit the radar though yes. because i've i've seen a number of our colleagues say as such yeah that this is one of those movies mm-hmm. on so, twitter mm-hmm, and it's twitter. getting that buzz right now yeah. it it is it, if you don't watch this movie and have your heartstrings pulled out a little bit mm-hmm. you're you're dead on, inside dead yeah inside. i was gonna say on crack but also dead inside <laughs> uh, one of the two <laughs> They're not that far from each other. I think crack does kill you on from the inside out. Yeah. So, yeah. In a yeah. good way. Yeah. It doesn't? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to talk to them because it was her first feature. Yeah. Uh, and kick Well, I kind of compared directors. it to the writer because that was also a, a thing based on horses, a first time director, uh, an indie that not many people watch, which I love. And I'm looking forward to seeing the Mustang. The way you talk about it, we seem to have similar taste in most everything. Yeah. So um, what I'm. What are the I'm, things we stray on? Uh, big Brother. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Big, no pun intended. That's a big yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, we had the most boring. Uh, there's a two part finale of The Bachelor. The first part was last night. It was like the, the parts when it was Colton and the girls and he was like telling them. This, I don't want to spoil if you guys haven't watched it, but the other parts no, were like the interviews. I, I need you to spoil it. I don't care what ends up happening. I've we been... don't know yet because there's a two part. The other the other part of the finale is tonight. Wait, so does all he we get got... the date with that chick? We don't the know. Hannah B. Hannah B has been What's eliminated a long What's time the other ago. Girl? Hannah G is still Hannah there. Hannah G. Hannah Han- G. I have to no, know. No, he doesn't want Hannah G, and he doesn't want Tasha. He, he wants Cassie. Yeah, but he went on the the, he the didn't. Di- Tasha. He did. He did. Hannah she gone. G. He I didn't. don't know. He didn't. He no. sent her home. He sent her home direct from did the she close. Cry? Oh yeah, it would be awkward. Let me ask you a question. They were in love. Yeah, the... she was going to tell him that she was in love with him. And then he came in and was like, sorry, I'm in love with Cassie. And, and now and he's left with gone. nobody. But Cassie's not there. No. Cassie's okay, coming back. That was my question. I was hoping that this would be the first Bachelor season where nobody ends up together. Right. Well, no, here's Cass- what, Cassie can they possibly back. do this? Now, Are they the going thing. there? Because that's what they were doing in the commercial. The episode ended with Colton going to Cassie's room, and she has, still hadn't left Portugal. Oh. And, and it just because ended with Because production not let her? I, I mean, you got to imagine. But the funny part was is that oh, God. that so when They're Colton Colton together. jumps the fence and they go, of course they are. <laughs> Come on. Uh, when Colton jumped the fence and Cody, go ahead and start falling asleep back there. When when Colton jumped the fence, <laughs> this was you, buddy. The, the most exciting part of this whole thing was when Colton jumps the fence. The entire production crew is chasing him down. Like you see the awkward camera thing, you know, when like reality camera people run with the camera and it's like hitting the ground and going up. And this a female producer and Col- I will say this. Listen. Do I think that Colton is has been a good bachelor? Absolutely not. Yes. No, I think oh, he's been average I at guess best. Wrong. It, 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 honestly, it's kind of like the fifth lead in an average movie got the starring role in the sequel, and you're like, wait, him? He was <laughs> in the first movie? And so Colton, <clears throat> first of all, Colton cried the whole episode. Dude, which one? Turn this off one? the waterworks. Yeah, this episode. You can't. Sometimes you can't. Love Just, is love. No, it, dude, dude, I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> I. <I've> cr- <laughs> Love is love. You can't. Uh, you can't. You can't. you can't. you can't. Love is love. I was like, <laughs> okay. gonna say, you know, like, oh, Colton, sh- stop crying. Yeah. But then love is love. love it's is like, love. Yes. I've cried a number of times <laughs> yeah. because How do you fight love that? is love. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Riley, you've gone through things that neither one of us in here have gone through. So there's mm. like a certain point. Have I cried because of love? No, I cried because an ex girlfriend punched me in the forehead with a metal bracelet. You never cried because of love? <laughs> no. Oh, that's BS. It's not. It's BS. Okay. Bullshit. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, well, I mean, I cried when my wife walked down the aisle. So oh, that's cr- love. You cried because of love. Okay. I'm talking about this kind of fake love Sad. after a month on reality TV. What do you got, well, Cody? In all fairness, I hear it's like more like two months. Yeah. Well, the amount of time they actually Probably. spend together. I'm just saying it. I, I was saying the same thing, but let's give them the second month. But none of them actually spend two months with Colton. They spend two months with each other and about 14 Listen, hours Josh, with Colton. I don't watch the show. Listen, Roxy. This is how you're spending your life. Big brother. <laughs> I know. And now I've been roped into this situation, okay? And it's actually pretty <sighs> – and, and I'll tell you the most entertaining part of The Bachelor. And for those people that are like, yeah, they died about The Bachelor. Cody, this is the most entertaining part of The Bachelor. Watch it with friends and make fun of them the whole time. <laughs> I'm good. That is <laughs> the best part. Imagine you could sit in a theater, Cody. Imagine you could sit in a theater with a bunch of your friends and make fun of the movie the whole time. 
Okay? I Basically like DVD commentary. So I kind of just ate my words on that one. But Patreon.com, that's wangers. Uh, <laughs> do wangers. I have a new pitch. <laughs> nice plug. For a new bachelor. Okay. What if instead of at the end you have to propose, you have to impregnate somebody? <laughs> because then I Jesus, feel like. Jesus, what is this, you Afghanistan? Really, no. <laughs> no. The, the, everybody's signing up on their own free will, yeah. or it could be a girl and all guys, and she has to. Because if if that's the case, I feel like different selections are made. I mean, I feel like they're getting forced could, into pregnancy, which is illegal. No, you're not. You're forced into pregnancy. You're signing up for the show. You want to have a kid. Okay, let me say it's this. Not, there, putting, there will be waivers. Let me say are this. Are we selecting random people saying you have to go on the bachelor? No. Now the new part is you have to go to get pregnant, and if you're signing up, it means you want a kid. All right, let me tell you this. It's freaking genius. It's brilliant. It's really good. What because if, then you pick the person yep. that can parent your kid. This would this this is I the fact that we're saying this live right now on Collider Live and the fact that we don't go and pitch this immediately. We this goes it. on a state this goes on a TLC that used to be called the Learning Channel, and now it's just 90 Day Fiance. Well, no, 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 no slight on 90 Day Fiance. No, I love 90 it's Day Fiance. It's pretty entertaining. Yep. Okay. Well, we gotta like do fiance. What? Don't oh, worry about oh, it, Star Wars King. It's okay. amazing. <laughs> but we have to do like fertility <laughs> tests. Sit on my so we gotta throat. do like totally. we gotta put them through the obstacles. Yes, and then at the end, they're like, "Do does do does she get pregnant?" Then there's a totally fun thing about that whole thing. The stakes are raised to a whole nother level. It is genius. Cody, as the only person in here that is about to be with child, do you think you would watch this version of The Bachelor? Probably not. Oh, good. <laughs> nothing against you. Mm -hmm. Anything with the name Bachelor on it? Probably not. Well, we're not going to call, call it Bachelor. Bachelor. We're oh, calling it Prego. No, we're calling it Nine Months. Nine Months. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Pretty easy. Nine Months. Yeah. What about a show yes. where, where they get together already? Yeah. And then the whole show is about everybody trying to break them up. Oh, that's fun. And then but do like, they know? Do they know everybody's trying to break oh, them up? No. Yeah. And they and see then we like, can only but, do one season. That was like Joe Millionaire, and uh, right. you know. But yeah. no, but yeah. you you know, it's like how much they have to walk through, and people hit them with pillows, and they shoot them with paintball nah, you guns. Did, you you guys, lost me. Guys. It's, it's more of a mental game. Did you guys watch? No, no, no. But that's part of it. That's uh, the mental breakdown. You get them. You get them off balance, pillows in the face, yeah. and then you go in. Okay. Like hard, I'm okay mentally. with that concept, but most importantly, did you guys watch the show on TV that only lasted like two episodes and then they put it online where we pretended somebody was Prince Harry? Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and the yes. women no. don't know it's not Prince Harry. That's genius. And they think they're dating Prince Harry and they're going to become these princesses. And it's just like a doppelganger. It was the most unbelievable show. That's and genius. then it's like, is it for love or money? And mm -hmm. at the end, they get to select if he picks them, whether they're leaving him because he's not a prince. It was the best. That's. It, I also watched a trailer for a show last night that I didn't know existed from back in the '90s, hosted by Monica Lewinsky. No by the Lord. By, which wow. was they had to marry. I this? forget what the show. I don't know, like the late '90s or something. Apparently, these women had to date guys who wore masks the whole time. And then they had to eliminate them, but they could never see their face. They could only see, like, their body and talk to them and their personality. And sometimes the guys would take off the mask, and then she would have to wear, like, a blindfold. It was it, – the trailer really kind of freaked Footage me out. Footage or it didn't happen. Yeah, Cody, Cody pull up pull – up the, there's a trailer for this show. You don't have to pull up the whole thing. And I'm sure we've already lost our entire audience talking all about this Bachelor, which is fantastic. No, no we haven't because they are the best. Yes. Because yeah. our Hashtag audience, that's the show. Our audience is amazing. Yes. And we have the uh, – uh, while there's some – Negativity out in the world. In general, we have the coolest people out there. Okay, we do. So Speaking Monica of the Lewinsky mask show, is yes, what we're looking at. Yeah, here? look it up. What? Oh, he typed in. What am I looking for? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we're you blind. can just Cody, ask me, Cody. You have a microphone. It was Alex that typed it. He uh, did not have a microphone. Sorry, Alex. Classic, Alex. classic Marzonia. How, uh, Alex? Real quick, how did your recording session go this weekend? It went well. I got a new song. Nice. Hey, Mr. Right. Personality. Oh man, is that about me in the tenth grade? Because I couldn't get a date. Is that, that the I name heard. of your song, Alex, or just the show? Okay, here you go. This is it. Watch. Oh, Lord. When one extraordinary woman. I've sort of made my mark as small as it may be. Who oh, Fox. Look, okay. So this is clearly the 90s. And it's on, oh, obviously it's on Fox. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, and she, like, she's a, she's a good looking girl. Who is she? No, look at this. Uh, They're all in masks. Uh, look at it. Uh, Cody, what is the show called? I forgot about Mr. This. Personality. Is it, that's this. what it's called. That's it's called Mr. Personality. Yeah. I didn't see it, but I, I knew about it. So it basically looks like nine guys in, or like 30 guys from Man in the Iron Mask starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Nine? Nine. 
Like or they, eight. They are in like metal masks. This yes. Isn't... I'm watching this the, shit. These are like submissive. They, they oh, look like submissive. Oh, those are duct tape masks now. Oh, man. It's crazy, right? What are it the chances she found love and is still with the guy? Oh, man. This is a, it's I, I just the drama alone by the masks. Wait, are there multiple women? What happened? I think she is like hangs out with friends and they're trying to get her like get them in trouble. It's like that show where she's the, making out with the masks. Yes, she's hooking up with masks, dudes. I mean, can you imagine this? One? It's so good. Wait, this look at look at all the different color masks right now. They mask they <laughs> match the masks to the show. It's genius. It's genius. And this show was hosted by Monica Lewinsky. This I, is real? Yeah, I it, dude, it's real. It's on Fox. <laughs> it's friggin' on Fox. Oh Mr. Personality. And it looks like the, uh, the mask on What do Phantom we have Opera. to do to bring this back? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's got to be. It's got to be pitched every whoever year. Whoever I have to call. Whatever <laughs> well, I have to do. Create a hashtag right now. Uh, save Mr. Personality. Save Mr. Personality. <laughs> It lasted and it, which five is so, episodes, by the way. It lasted <laughs> five episodes. That's incredible. In 2003. 2003. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, really good year for Monica Lewinsky. Wow. Totally, yeah. How did that happen? I don't know, because wasn't the Clinton scandal in like 94, 95? Yeah, yeah in wow. the mid-90s, Later? I thought. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Uh, Can we get a year on So No, so 92, Clinton got when elected, right? So Clinton 92 and to 2000. Monica Lewinsky It was at the end of his thing. Yeah, right hook it up. Uh, before, scandal, before, what year? Again, I, before 98. we... 98, uh, wow. 98, see, I was kind of... Uh, so this is only a couple years. Five years later. In politics, that's you're around the same time because yes. everybody was talking about it probably yeah. before that. Uh, so we uh, we covered our Bachelor news. We covered uh, our Mr. Personality news. We covered our Starburst news. Um, real quick, uh, if you guys are in the Seattle area on Thursday, I will be there with Mark Ellis and Ken Knapsack. You guys can go to markellislive.com for tickets. 9 p.m. show, Columbia City Theater. Also, March 23rd here in Los Angeles, downtown L.A., all of your favorite Schmodown competitors, except for myself, will be at the free-for-all. You can go to schmodownlive.com, get some tickets. Or uh, theschmodownlive.com. Theschmodownlive.com. The schmodownlive Apologize. It's the schmodownlive.com where you can get those tickets there. Also, if you guys are looking, you're like, hey, I, I really wanted to see this part of Collider Live. What's everybody talking about? All the time codes are put down there by one, the one and only Alex Marzonia. So if you want to just fast forward Ooh. to that part or whatever, you can. We're not gonna uh, we're not offended if you don't watch the entire show. There are also clip outs that Mark Riley spends a lot of time on. So check those out. I, Share I them. Spend, do that, whatever. That, that's well, the editors and Cody, my, while my I'm hero. Not offended, I will say that <clears throat> I'm a better Collider Live fan than you are if you fast forward forward because I listened to the whole thing. Agreed. Okay. So I just wanted it to be known that Ooh. I'm not offended, but I am better. Done and done. Done and done. So be cool, cool, better. Cool, 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 cool. Hey, cool. The, the pool is big enough for all of us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm in the deep end. But you're in the deep end. And you can't swim. And I can... I can tread water. Okay. So if you want to go to the heated private pool right, with right. bar service. Where nobody pisses. Where nobody pisses. Mm, that's, there's that. I don't know. The heated part where the bar service is, more than likely there's some so, urine around there. Well. I mean, I've peed in the pool bars that's in Mexico. That's true. So, yeah. 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 Oh, well, boy. you're not invited to my part of the pool. Well, well, fine. And neither is your urine. That's well, fine. Just to be clear. Um, so, Mark Riley, um, yeah. you know, recently, unfortunately, mm. um, we lost the one and only cow. cow I know. Poop. Yeah. Uh, my friend, I don't know if you saw the picture I posted on Instagram last night. But my friend I just saw got that. a lab puppy. Well, it's like a, it's a golden retrie- a mini golden retriever puppy. So the, the retriever will get to about 50 pounds from what I understand, like 45 pounds. So it's like a smaller it, golden retriever. Oh, it's a smaller one? Because, yeah, I saw your picture and I for a split second I thought you got a dog. His who, name who is are Rebel. We talking about? So I posted a picture last night with a puppy. Of your friend. A friend who just got a puppy like two days ago, right? Mm. And those, this puppy is the Rebel's the dopest name. Yeah, it's the cutest puppy ever. Ever. He was like biting my face and licking my face. Aww. And I was I was like I was gonna steal it. And then at one point we were all watching the bachelor that was over and the dog was napping in the corner oh. and you could tell he was dreaming because his feet were stopped and the entire room just stopped and just stared at the dog dreaming. It was the cutest thing. There, right there. See, that's a little rebel. And oh. he's, he's biting my finger and he's chewing on my my tassels from my uh, hooded sweatshirt. Yeah. Just the cutest dog in the world. And you listen, I love dogs. I love pretty much every dog except for two that I've ever met in my life. Mm. But there was a singular dog that was the best, and that was Cal. Oh, and thanks, a lot of buddy. people have uh, sent you some really cool stuff. I yeah, with Cal. I gotta say, uh, especially to a, a, a 
the Collider live audience. Well, everybody. Schmoes, Collider, uh, Schmoes, Schmodown, Collider, whatever. Schmodown, Collider, everything. Um, it has been so incredibly overwhelming, the, mm-hmm. the response, um, all the messages. I'm still getting messages, and, and I, I just wanted to say thank you to all of them who have either reached out, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. Um, but I got to do a special shout out because this is this is incredible. Uh, over the weekend, I got a message from Ken. Okay. He texted me. He goes, I got a package here. And I go, okay. So I go in, and uh, it's from Phil Strickland. Phil Strickland. And he wrote Strickland Motors. not only the most wonderful message, but he gave me something. So when I opened it up and, and held it out, uh, Ken and I both cried oh, again. Man. So I'm going to stand up real Talk quick about crying because I got to show this. Love. Go ahead. For all you listeners out there, Mark Riley has um, – look at this blanket. This look at is this. fantastic. Look at this. Did you post this on Instagram or anything? I right? haven't posted yet. I'm revealing it here, and then okay. I'm going to post it. I mean, look at that. It's so beautiful. The amount – I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Look at that little so Kalazar puppy. So for any of our iTunes listeners, it's a picture of Mark – uh, his fiance Julie and Cal in the middle, and then multiple pictures on the outside mm-hmm. of both Mark and Cal, and just Cal by uh, Cal's self. Yeah, and yeah. It's, and it's like and it's, like, and it's yeah. one beautiful of those... blanket with tassels. Oh, it's just stunning. And my parents had blankets similar so to beautiful. that material. And I got to tell you, those are some of my favorite blankets of all time. So. They're the best. Yeah. And and Phil's message, Phil, thank you very very much. Um, Phil, what you thrilled. wrote uh, brought me to tears. Um, this, I, I came home. Julie immediately broke into tears. And as you said, it happened to him. He lost his dog, mm-hmm. and his family members gave him this blan- a, a oh, very cool. similar blanket. And you wrap yourself up in it, keep yourself warm with the <laughs> memories. And uh, <laughs> Julie and I stayed up, watched Creed two, wrapped in this blanket, yeah. had a wonderful night. And then uh, yesterday, you going to hold that towards yeah, the main camera. Yeah, please do. Megan Bjork. Uh, I hope I pronounce your name Megan correctly. Megan Bjork um, sent that. me this plaque, mm-hmm. a memorial plaque for Cal. Uh, that we can either keep here as like you know because she said no, it, it, take was, that home. That's it was yours. I put it next to his ashes last night yeah. and it, it looked really nice. But uh, she she gave the full name Cal mm-hmm. Boogie, which was his big nickname, uh, the Schmo Dog, and then a, a last line of the poem I wrote for him. This is very special. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, sa- I, know I can't even. It's probably unsensitive, but I was like, it, "Is this like a gravestone? Because it's marble, you know?" It, when you it like... kind of is, and yeah. I love that. And yeah. I, I put it now. I have a, pl- I have this whole area in my apartment where, you know, I got the action figures that uh, that Adam did for me. Yeah. I did uh, his ashes. I have this. There's a picture coming. I know. Um, y- you guys, throughout this, um, it shows we had a conversation on Collider Live that there are trolls out there that mm-hmm. that sometimes you get attacked and whatnot. Well, guess what? There's more love out there. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely more love, and uh, thank you. There you go. Very, very much. That's awesome, man. Both things are so beautiful. I love it. God. I'm on a cow blanket now. And I can't believe I didn't cry. It's uh, it's getting better. So there it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, So... Listen, there's a lot of news out there right now. Uh, do you want me to wait for Christian? Yeah, we got to do that. So okay. I think Christian he's going to be here any clean. minute. Christian so we'll go to break in a little dentist. bit. Yeah. Christian is gone right now. Christian. <laughs> I, I honestly, Christian usually I like your songs. I hate at this song. The dentist Christian. Actually, it's grown on me a little bit. his teeth clean. Christian. Christian. Is gone right now. Christian, Christian, um, Christian. Hey, Christian, Alex, can you make that Christian, a song? Your next recording Christian. session, can that just well, be where's, your... Well, where's, uh, where's our boys? You're not going to chime got... in with a Christian? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> did, is uh, that where you come in and go, Christian is here? And oh, you want me to freestyle yeah. rap? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't ahead. know. See how good I am? Yeah, yeah that was, that was pretty good. Let's see what you can rhyme Do you want to lead me in? Go ahead. Why don't you lead me in? No, 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 no. This is how songs work. Christian at the dentist. Christian getting his teeth clean. Christian not here right now. Christian, it's Christian time. I'm on the slime <laughs> in a red dragon time. The Game of Thrones news a little bit later. Dentist. Right now, we're bachelor partying. Uh, don't <laughs> rhyme the words because I'm not really quick on my feet. That's Hi, why pipe. I rap like this. JTE rap, rap. fell off a bird. Game of Thrones news, Game of Thrones news. Riley's dog has a blanket. That's blanket. That's a blanket. Hey, one, two, three, four. Roxy doesn't know where to go when she's in L.A. Lived here 10 years. Doesn't know how to drive a car or use a GPS. Still use share the cell phone bill with her brother. Bam, 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 bam. Hey, you know what? A lot of people gave me love about sharing the cell phone bill with my brother. I saw one of those tweets, and I'm embarrassed for those people as well. And I just want to let you know, by a lot of people, I meant that one person on Twitter. <laughs> that one person that on Twitter. Person on I like Twitter. that you tried to get a lot of people, but I see you. I see you. I know you do. Yeah. 
I see you too. <laughs> I see you. I see you. I told oh the God. story of you not being able to find Los Angeles in a in a car yesterday with three other people, and they were like, "Oh, did she just move here?" I was like, "No, she went to college here." Yeah. How old is she? Well, she's been here ten years. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And she and where did she have to go? I was like, she had gone here every day for I don't know eight months, but also for the last three to four years. And they're like, so does she? Does she live in like Orange County and has to like take a ways around a freeway? I was like, no, no, she lives in West Hollywood. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. There's okay. no explaining it. it. Here's the thing. It's bonkers. It makes me sound. Uh, like all the things I've been accused of being on this show, mm-hmm. that makes me sound like those things. Yes, and mm. I acknowledge that it's not my strength. Uh-huh. It's like this weird mental block I have. Uh, you know, all we could do is try to be better every day. That's that's what we can. That's what we can. Uh, we're gonna go to break here in about a second because Christian is back from getting his teeth cleaned. He missed. He is. He, yeah. How do you know? Because I, I just got a note from Riley. Christian. That's what, that's what a producer does. Back from getting his teeth cleaned. Here Everybody he knows is. It. Yeah. Here comes. Go ahead. Take Everybody it. I'm, knows I'm gonna jump it. in. Christian. Everybody knows it. Back from the dentist. It's Christian. On Twitter. No longer getting his teeth cleaned. Christian. <laughs> he got some floor. Ride at the dentist. Brian Cranston played a dentist in Seinfeld. Cranston on Breaking Bad. His son RJ Mitty was on the show. We saw him at the national championship. I was blacked out on Miller Lite. Chris uh, was there. He likes Florida State. We also saw Roy Jones Jr. who was at the Rose Bowl. I drank more. And then Finstock was on crutches. We got handicapped access because Finstock had some weird card. It was awesome. We got the free seats. And a guy in a wheelchair loved my dance. Bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow. Christian back bow, bow. from the dentist. Word. All right. This is Collider Word. Live. <laughs> this is Collider <laughs> Live. Uh, we will be back in a few minutes. Christian will be sitting in this seat. I'm now sweating from rapping so hard. Special thanks to Where I'm From, uh, who sent me a bunch of Pittsburgh shirts. And this is a new Pittsburgh a cool shirt, shirt. So thank you very much. City of Bridges, most bridges in the world outside of Venice, Italy. That's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Josh McCougar, Roxy Charlie, Buck Riley. We'll be back after the break. Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already for those of you that have already watched. Thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe t- so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it, we've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know yeah. what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's okay. as far out as we'll go uh, or cricket. But uh, maybe in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports, is there for you. Take a look at it. Take a watch. Oh, Let us know what you think. Yeah. Oh, hi, guys. It's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It oh, is the show yeah. that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed, and we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about oh, movies, man. TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. 
So we talk about the stuff that's coming out. We talk about what we hope is coming out. We do fantasy casting of things that should exist. Why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things. And every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics, buy and print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out, and we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital. I'll forgive you. As long as you're paying for your comics. It's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and to can catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed, and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media what topics are burning up social media that's what we do on collider sports time i'm joined by my top 10 co-host matt nost me and him we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about nfl the major league baseball playoffs nhl and the nba which is starting up soon we're going to talk about that we also get into ufc stuff college football all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports, we're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Yep, dentist is done, and it was a good dentist. You know, you always—it's like it's like a crapshoot though, because I hadn't been there in like eleven months. So it's like I, you go into the dentist, and you're wondering by the end of it, All right, what bad news am I going to hear? Right. And, he, and, the, and it's like the dentist goes, "Looks good, everything's great." I'm like. All right, you get on the road, you're in a, in a good mood. But hello, everybody. It's the beginning, I guess, of Collider Live for me, but for you guys, doing a lot of songs and <laughs> dancing and a lot I of good stuff. A, I wrote you a, a freestyle whole raps. ballad. I mean, I worked really hard on it. My good freestyle rap. What do you say? Like you're always upset about it. Well, I just, I, I thought it'd be more like a thank you for the song. I didn't get a chance to hear it yet. No, I was well, in, the, in the booth, and all I know is I could hear it, you know, in the distance. I was, it was really meaningful. I got important it right here. To me. Thank you. <laughs> No, the Pokemon. Thank you, Cody. Um, oh, I wrote that. Yeah, I don't a lot know, richer. I don't even know what the embargo is on on Dumbo, but I went to the uh, I went to the premiere last night. Yeah. How, did your daughter like it? You don't even have to talk about you. My daughter had a good time. Yeah. I'll say that. My daughter had a good time, and I, what was funny is we sat directly behind. Uh, AC Slater himself and his family. No it, was, way. it was pretty that's funny. Cool. Yeah, that's did cool. Did she have any idea who that was? No, she had no idea because she kept guessing songs and like his kids were guessing songs and my daughter calls of course is like, Nope, that's Aladdin. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Wait, Mario Lopez looks back. Oh, like up. before the movie. The guys plays, like, they, play, oh, they, play, uh, they play the organ at the uh, at the El Capitan. So they're yeah. playing the organ and my daughter's guessing the music. And so it was, at one point she got some uh, Mario Lopez love. She, he looks nice. up and goes, Yep. Aladdin. <laughs> it turns back around. It was good. It was. It was. Uh, it was funny. Did you see Michael Keaton? 
I did not see Michael Keaton. I saw Eva Eva Green, mm-hmm. who is one of the most attractive women in the history of the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Agreed. And 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 one Clay Aiken. Whoa. Twice. Whoa. Is he in Dumbo? Double Clay. No, no. But you know who was in Dumbo that I didn't realize. I mean, I, I assumed wh- why else would he be there? But they opened up the premiere last yesterday, and it's like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Let's get ready to Dumbo. And it was Michael Buffer. Get out he was here. in the theater last wow. night, and he uh, and he. He was and he's there and he's like, let's get ready for for Dumbo okay. and he's in the movie twice. You know? Okay, and he, and I saw him there and dun, he's still dun, yeah dun, the best. He's got like a twenty five year old girlfriend or whatever yeah. he's got. And he oh, uh, it's my dad. Yeah, <laughs> probably. But he is he's just man that guy, and he just electrifies the whole place. It starts and um, and the movie and the movie began and and that Do you think we'll be it. happy with it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I I gotta find out what the embargo is on it because it's just uh, I definitely. Cody, can you find out what the embargo is? I don't, I don't it's kind of hard to find say it. it there. Oh, well, oh, well Dumbo first the... reactions are released. Okay, so the, uh, here, here's my first reaction. My first reaction are is Are those that, Twitter, though, or are those reactions in, on video? I guess it's just in general. But uh, so, just make sure it's not... It's a social media. I can, give my, I can tell you what my tweet would have been. It's, it's, uh, okay. I think, it's, I think that Dumbo starts out... Like the classic film with with the with the emotion, then it rushes into a brand new story that doesn't deliver fully. Mm. That's what I would say. Okay. Um, mm. You know my Can prob- you compare to other Disney movies? Yeah. Or? So what I would say is, you know how my problems that I have, like I think Cinderella, Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, did the f- adaptation from the animated into live action well because they took elements of the movie itself, right? And in the case of Beauty and the Beast, it's pretty much the same thing. (laughs) But just spun off and did new things, but inside of that same lore. My problem with Maleficent, my problem with Dumbo, and um, and even Alice in Wonderland, they take up Part of what made the original movie so good, and then they just go off into these new, brand new stories that have nothing to do with the original. What now, one's what's Malfeasant based off of? Malfeasant. Um, it's a Sleeping Beauty. She's oh, the villain in Sleeping Beauty. It, like, and uh, it, it's not. Ba- it's, it's a prequel. Very different, it's though, a prequel. Yeah, it's a prequel. yeah okay. but that's where the character comes from. Got it. And right. it's Angelina Jolie, right? Yes. And so for that one, did you not see it? No, no. That one and Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is supposed to be like a direct sequel. Of the the animated, you film, don't like right? Alice in Wonderland. I didn't mind the first one. The second one was terrible. I've never been able to sit through any version of Alice in Wonderland. I love the f- that's yeah. my favorite animated one really? of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's just pure nonsense. Yeah, it's just nonsense. Yeah, you huh. would like that. I yeah. can't. I can't sit through that. I understand. This tweet disagrees Cats. with you. Okay, Dumbo Source, my favorite live action Disney remake yet. Uh, from the gorgeous blend of both of goth and whimsy, the sequence in which Dumbo replaces his trunk with a thirty-two inch shit. What? No, this is that guy. <laughs> this is this is. Oh. The- this is, this is that guy. This, this guy. This he guy. makes things that tweets out. Yeah, he's great. He's this guy, Ben Meckley. I think we were trying to get him in the studio. He, he's <laughs> great. He, all his tweets, he, he, and people retweeted and stuff. Like he, he, Oh, get, I love in which Dumbo replaces his trunk yeah. with a 32 inch machete and yeah. has an affair with a bored housewife. The Tim Burton we know and yeah, love he, is finally he, back he, in he full force. He throws in one line that's ridiculous, and he's been making a career out of it, and that's amazing. Um, I'll tell How you, many followers does this guy have? He's probably gotten up there now because, like, his. his Oh, Five, that's it? 5,000. That's ridiculous. But, but he's Christian, got some, yeah. you see what he's got. He's verified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? Get that blue check. We're working on it, though. I don't, I, see, I every don't time care. you guys... I know you don't, but yeah. I care for you because I was listening to I wasn't on the show during yeah. that episode, but you're 100% right. In terms of business, Like it will be helpful for you. Oh, I mean, very much so. And that's why. It's it, it's yeah. not a uh, give me that check so that I have it thing. It will be... No, you go I to know. a different box. It, More people care about it, and I appreciate it than, than I do at this point. Somebody... But, Two things, real quick. One, every time all the first reactions come out on Twitter, and I never go to any of the yes. premieres or anything, I always just kind of make a side joke about what movie I like as compared to Han Solo or whatever the case may be. Second of all, somebody tweeted at me, like yelled at me, you're verified. Quit complaining, you're verified. And then I was like, well, we were kind of talking about Instagram in the one point. But go ahead and yell. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> go ahead and yell. Go ahead I feel like and, I missed part yeah. of the story. No, no, I'm talking about the blue check mark. I'm talk- So the blue check mark, obviously, it matters. Business, all yes. that kind of stuff. We were talking about you're, in, you're verified on Instagram, not on Twitter. Um, we're verified on Twitter, not on Instagram. Um, so I was complaining, and a guy like just oh. came at me and was like, "You're freaking verified." And I was right. like, no, "On Instagram, yeah, 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 people like to yell." Uh, but, what are you gonna yeah. do? but uh, Christian, yeah. back from the dentist. Christian <laughs> See, has I, really clean teeth. Christian, I'm not no? a fan. Uh-uh. Yeah, crap. No, I, I think the best no, part I, of it was my freestyle raps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, your rap was. Awesome. I I'm just saying, glad I wasn't there. Um, but it's uh, it's I, it got stuck in my head. Okay. Well, good. 
Yes, it's like trying to stop trying to make Felch happen. <laughs> Felch, Felch. 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 Yeah. I don't know the movie. We're gonna make Felch happen. Don't you worry. We're making Felch happen, baby. Um, never, never, never claim to be part of the uh, the Mean Girls <laughs> Schmodown Championship me. oh, team. It's so good. That movie it's is good. so good. It's good, and they good. made a play out of it too. So, um, did you guys see the the trailer for Aladdin? Because I did yes, not. We did. Okay, yes. so tell me about it. Uh, good. Better, yeah. Worse. Awesome. Way better. Okay. I will say this: they should have led with that. Yeah. That that should have been the lead trailer. It shouldn't have been like these decent teases. <laughs> <laughs> Fel- Felching when, when semen or, or other fluids are sucked Roxy. from the anus. <laughs> Definitely stop making Felch trailer. Alpheus- Governor and U.S. Senator from Michigan, <laughs> Alpheus Fletcher. Oh, what a what a what an inf- unfortunate last name. <laughs> uh, my friends call me Al Fetch. Alpheus <laughs> yeah. Fletch. Once Fe- you go Felch Felch, 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 oh, you got him. Oh, you got him. Hey, what have you guys been doing all weekend? Just felching Felching around. Good Lord. Read Inga Roxy. You want to read that one? What's that say? Felching is a sexual practice involving the act of orally sucking semen out of the (laughs) anus of one's partner. (laughs) The act of sucking semen out of a vagina (laughs) is known as cream pie (laughs) eating. (laughs) Oh, yeah. This is horrendous. <laughs> Please stop you, talking. You, you know this is the song they're going to make. Yes. Not the rapping. No, you not come that. in somebody's butthole and then you go down there to suck it out? Look, you learned. You had to make felt happen, didn't you? I, by we, accident. We could, we've been trying for years to make fetch happen. Well, that's and you them. made felt that's, happen. That's on them for writing so close. To felt. You can understand. Yeah. Lita Heedy Headley. You know, it's not too far right off. Fetch felt. Good Lord. What a different show this turned Woo. out to be. But also, why do you. Well, that's that one no, don't, me... not, no more. No. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're not investigating I'm get any Ill. further. People are weird. It's probably Germans. Yeah. What are you going to do? Hey, who's um, high? <laughs> Come on. Danish uh, Christian Harlow. It's not Danish. Danish. No, the, Danes, <laughs> the Danes' tax structure is too high for them to be felt. Yeah, you wouldn't be okay. doing that. That's, that's something else. So right. the so trailer, so high so high 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 the trailer high. was... Um, Everybody knows that German porn better. is weird. We don't need yeah. to get into more felching. But go ahead. Sorry. De- definitely the, stop trying to make felch happen. Yeah. Uh, right. The Aladdin trailer was a lot better. It's a good transition. Uh, I think that... Thank you. I'm just willing it. Just, just go. Just, just push willing. it into push No it into felching the in the Aladdin trailer. That's for sure. That we know. They didn't release the Red Man trailer. Yeah. We didn't discuss it afterwards, so I didn't get Josh's opinion For on it. For my next trick. <laughs> I thought that the genie looked a lot better. Dude, w- they finally played to what we'd wanted from the genie. Will Smith is funny. He's a funny guy. Yeah. He's funny as the genie in this trailer. Really looks better. His vo- yes, it's all, I'm telling you, but they should have the led deal, with this. What is the deal with, and I'm sure people are yelling What's right now. What's the deal with the blue be- genie? It's because sometimes he's in the bottle and sometimes he's not. He walks around. But why is he sometimes blue and sometimes... Because uh, he can camouflage himself yeah. in anything he yeah. wants. But, why, but based on what? Like when he's having those appearances out in other Probably places? Probably wants to blend in with Prince Ali, yeah. I would assume. But he's I, supposed to be his I, I understood why when he was dressed up with Prince yeah. Ali out. But at one point, there's a scene, it's just Prince Ali and him. And he's sitting there looking like Will Smith. Oh, well, I mean, you can maybe do Will Smith wants. didn't want the makeup on that day. I don't yeah, know. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. What's the deal? Is he blue? Is he white? Are you, are you, are you trying to find consistency in genie practices? Is that yes, what I am. Yeah, okay. Figure it out. The trailer looked a lot better, and uh, the music was the strongest part of the trailer. You heard it really, whole new yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. it really got you going. It, it just, it was Looks the good. trailer yeah. that we had wanted, and we got like two teasers, semi-trailers, and then we got the blue reveal. How's Jafar? And... Uh, you get a little bit of Jafar. It's not. You he don't was, get he much was a, at he all. He was a big, a big, as big of a problem in that last trailer as the the blue genie. You get was. all of like six seconds of. Jafar. So we don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. A lot of good action dun, dun. scenes. Yeah, played last night. Cool, like uh, you know, like cool VFX that they've shown. Yeah. Right. It looked it looked a lot better. The trailer played a lot better. If you wanted to see Aladdin, and this trailer will get you excited for the okay, movie, as the other that. ones didn't. Are you excited for the Mustang for the interview? I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh, this movie was so good. I did get the screener last night. You did. I got it. Did not watch it because I watched Dumbo. So uh, you're leading the interview. I'll tell you that much. Right behind the. Uh, very, I do want to talk to Matthias. Very Schoen, felch. Yeah. Fetch. No, fetch is the other one. <laughs> you fetch it. Okay. All right. Whatever. It's uh, the genie. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you gotta love what Cody's got to explain his joke. Cause guys, the genie. Wait. Huh? Did you not get it? I got it right away. You got it. Uh, not really. No, because I don't know the song. I, I mean, I know the song, but not as well. As, yeah. Well, he's Thank always God. saying, "If I was green, I would die. If I was green, I would die." What is he really I saying? Was, I'm, I'm oh. blue. I'm blue. I'm blue. blue. Oh. I was green. Yes, you don't know either. No, that's what he literally says. No, he's literally says. saying, "Dabadi, dabadi, dabadi." Oh, so there's, so there's no words. No. It's just nonsense. Uh-uh. I'm oh. blue. 
I'm blue. I see. Now I understand. Now I get the genie. I understand. Good. He's a, ba- a little blue guy that lives in a blue world. Okay, Cody, now I understand. No I have a blue house with a blue window. You don't know that part? I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> yeah. it's, did you find your way here today? I did. Josh asked me the same thing. You <laughs> guys no are problem. so sweet. Yeah, we care. We, we care because we but just want more problem. on the bit, obviously. The, if I don't ever show up, yeah. still send search parties. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm worried. They'll find you this in the most obvious place right. because LA Her is apartment. a grid. Well, no, no. But last night I was going to bed, and this was a real. Couldn't find of your mine. bed. No, I did find the bed eventually, no. but I'm, I'm going to bed, and I'm really nervous because I was like, if I die, yeah. and I don't show up to work, they're gonna think I'm lost, mm-hmm. and they're not gonna come find me dead. Well, wouldn't the neighbors find you first and then let everybody know? I don't have anybody. There's no neighbors. You live by yourself I, somewhere. I no, have no, neighbors. Why would they the ever find me? The smell. The sm- okay, but in that, I'm not gonna smell. For a couple of days, I'd hope you guys would find me before that. Because yeah. she's dead. Yeah. She's dead, guys. <laughs> and she would be blue. She yeah, right. Be blue. No, I, like what, I like what you're doing there, Cody. And it's a and it's a lot more of a peaceful or or fun way to find someone as opposed to like dark, dreary yes. music. Yeah. Like like uh, Danny Elfman might play. Yes, uh, correct. This, this is more of a. You found Roxy, and she had a smile on her it's face. It's the and big like, scene in the movie, and you see the that she's dead. Yeah, so, then, so you're ready to open the rock. So the investigators are ready to open the, the door, show. and they open the door, and I'm blue. I was waiting for. Cody I know, but he wasn't doing it. Forget it. I was helping. Forget it. I'm a very helpful person. Helpful Honda dealer. <laughs> Forgetful, helpful. Um, you want to get it? Well, that's that's a fun way to go. I was gonna I was gonna jump into the series and talk a little uh, uh, about MJ. Game of Thrones. Did no, you finish oh. it. Didn't finish it. Okay. I, again, between the, the watch and the screener, I didn't watch, and then Dumb like so. I get to the. By the way, the premiere. Do the premiere. Michael Keaton. I have to say, he's not good. I love Michael Keaton. Me too. He's one of my favorites it's of all best. time. Uh, and it's, it's, I would blame it on Tim Burton's uh, directing. Mm. It's it's so over the top. And he's was that or the twenty three inch machete that, that Dumbo starts I know. wielding? But, but that just, would be just hard like, to perform tell, with. Uh, uh, come on, and uh, I want you to join my uh, join the circus. You know, is that something you want to do? Yeah. And, and it's like, and he's, and he, but he's over the top. He's like. Look that way, to the future, and it's uh, and my and I did to my daughter. I said, does that sound, does sound like him? And she's like, she's like, yeah, he kind of sounds like Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter said that <laughs> to me. Well, she knows who because that's well, my, he's always I, making whenever, the voice. whenever oh. I drop to that oct- yeah. to that level, uh, like it, it it can get into the Busey. But but they him Will Arnett Busey they all kind of talk at like you know this kind yeah. of level. Who's Will Arnett? Uh, Will Arnett is the voice of. Uh, he's in uh, Arrested Development. No, he, no. he's the oh. voice of. Oh no, 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 no! I don't know. You, Roxy, that's not. That's not an unfair question. To ask uh, who uh, Will Arnett is, so I do work in there, this industry. I know, but sometimes you you you, you ask can't things, find your way from your. You ask what a, that's a very you, different. You asked what a potato <laughs> fart was. It's a fart that smells like a potato. Come on. Okay, but I don't know that. I don't it's fart. Pretty, put I it do together. Watch movies. Put it together. But <laughs> the way that you asked who Will Arnett was, you were like, "Who's Will Arnett?" Yeah. No. You, Who's Will Arnett playing? In the film, right? That's not what you said. And uh, you, out of everyone who gives most shit, wait, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. You mean so who's playing in the film? To ask the clarification question. Say, do you mean who he's playing in the film? I don't want to. I wanted to finish my story. Well, can you tell me who he's playing yes. in the film? Uh, no one. I was just saying that oh. they they sound alike. <laughs> as far as the him. voices <laughs> sound alike. How was I able to follow that? How was I? I, I followed you the whole way. Yeah. If so it, my question didn't even make sense. No, not even in the movie. Not at all. If the no. yellow brick road was that story, <laughs> you and I would still be road. on it, and Roxy would be killing a bunch she of people off the side. She would have Hold fell on. off a cliff Hold a while on. ago. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Do you Why are you know? waving? We can see you. Yeah, we got okay, you. Um, I had a lot of caffeine. Oh. Do you know no. how many people have tweeted at me? This is actual a lot of people. And even at the Schmodown event, people came up Six to me, people? and I don't even want to say who it was. Yes. People came up to me. They said, we love Collider Live. Mm-hmm. Thank God but, you're there okay. to explain what's happening. Sometimes we jump from subject to subject, and when you don't stop and say, huh, I don't know where we are. And those are my people. Three people? Hmm. No, it's literally. Stoned people? No, it's. For How many people? Those are my people let's also, get numbers. Let's get numbers. I'm talking, nine? I'm talking millions. You're full nine. of crap. No, but I am talking like, like three. At le- no, at least a couple dozen. Get that couple I'm dozen. Not, I will start okay. screenshotting. That's 24 uh, people. Yes, sir. Hey, right I'm, I'm, I'm going to say she's lying. Yeah, no. Yes, sir. Me too. I, I, no. And you, sir? No, I'm that's say, not a I'm couple say dozen. That's, not that's just you putting your hand up over there. If you, right now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, now I understand No, they will. They will. You come come to my defense. Yes. If my clarification questions are helpful, then make sure Christian knows that. But can I tell you something that I, I'm not paying attention to that anymore. So I, I I go to the next show tomorrow. After I shut this off, I, I go to the Facebook Pay attention group. To what? I look at the Facebook group stuff, see what they're talking about. Okay, so say it on Facebook. And then I go. Say it on Facebook. And, yeah, I like to look at the memes and stuff. And by the way, someone sent me a very funny song that I think we should play. 
Um, and it was, play it, Cody. You know what's no, on no, the no. Play. I got to play it because I didn't get a chance to send it to him. I'm no, that's all right. Fine. So, and actually, to be honest with you, I haven't even heard the whole thing. But this is, this is let's see if you guys know. Christian, what this is from? back no, from the not, dentist. Christian, oh, you're gonna tell me that I can't even open this chip with him. Christian, I might not be able to. Can't this. So open this, this, might be, this might be a bust, guys. Christian and technology. It's a situation. Yeah. Situation. No, it's not open. <laughs> Christian can't work a cell phone. Oh, look, look. Situation. Not open. Oh. Situation. He's Guys, pressing the buttons way too hard. Just click Situation. out. Anyway, all right, let's talk about this. Uh, game. We'll, talk, we'll switch to actually. You want to talk about Michael Jackson? Uh, yes. Okay. We should. Um, Do you want to talk about Game of Thrones first and then talk Michael Jackson? Because it's kind of a hard transition into anything else. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. I'm, I, I'm not telling you how to run your I show. I just but. want no, you're probably Let's right. rewind the tape yeah. to when I said that. When did you say that? When he said, we want to talk about something hard, and I looked at him and said, Game of Thrones? Like, we should do that first. Just rewinding the tape. Well, right, let, uh, okay. Let's try this. Sure. Let's try this to see if this works. Thank you. By all means. Anybody following that R. Kelly story? Oh, like gosh darn it. That yes, I am starting the R. Kelly story. There are older men that like younger women. Is that there are younger women that like older men. Are you an older man that likes younger women? I'm an older man that loves all women. Is this R. Kelly? Yeah. This is from that interview that he yeah, did. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm an older man that loves all women. Look at this song's fire. That little girl's trapped in a basement. Helicopters over my house. I'm not a devil. I know me that my monsters. It's a pretty crazy video. Wow. It's crazy. So there's like he's tons. Such, he's such a POS, but that song is awesome. They, well, it's from that thing where he freaked out. Yeah, yeah freaked out. He's just like, <laughs> it's it's Gale. Like, it, but what does he think inside of his head? He's like, if I freak out right now and go much other, like, people are going to sympathize with me. No right. one's going to sympathize with you. You lunatic. Yeah. You can't, this video. You yeah. can't rationalize when you say, what is he thinking? You also can't get in the head of somebody who is. Oh. Sleeping with fourteen-year-old right. women, Ugh. so like and I, videotaping I, it. That, girls, why is he girls gr- by the way? Girls, like girls. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't figure out why he freaks out because I can't figure out why anybody would ever try to ha- right. sleep with a fourteen-year-old oh. girl. God. Like I can't. So I can't think like that. Right. Neither we don't know why because we don't. Well, that guess, brain is not the same as. Ours. I guess we can transition. Though. He's a sexual predator. Well, I guess we can transition because yes. I did watch two hours of that. Uh, that so thing. the first part. Yeah. So look. Um, and here are my here are my overall thoughts with what I've seen so far because I haven't seen the other two. Mm-hmm. Um, I I tend to believe both of the dudes. I do. Um, and I and I, and I was, I, it's crazy. This thing sticks with you even after the first I part. Know. Uh, but I but I will say that I did go through uh, a lot of counterparts and read a lot of other things and, and I understand that here, here's the biggest problem the biggest problem there's a lot of problems the 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 one the one thing is that with Wade Robson right the one of the accusers the guy says that uh, you know all these things it, it, the first thing that he did that's hard and I know he explains it I guess in the second part mm-hmm. but he came out and said. Michael Jackson never did these things to me, mm-hmm. he, and, he, and he was on on oath saying so. So that, that's that's one kind of strike against him, mm-hmm. right? Are you talking about when he was a child or when he was twenty one? When he was twenty one, well, both, both, both times he said no. Then he, as far as I don't know, I think two thousand and maybe recently, right? He wanted he wanted to, or he wanted to, he wanted work with the Michael Jackson camp, and didn't get it. So some people say maybe this is him. You know, now because retaliating, retaliating. So the other thing is he dated Michael Jackson's niece. Is that what it was? Something like that. For over a year, they never interviewed her. They never talked to her. So um, there was there was stuff as far as money wise, and 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 there was there's other reports on one of the kids that initially came out. Mm -hmm. Then had this this thing was kind of debunked, but one of the things initially came out and and said that he was sorry that he made these claims against Michael Jackson, that his dad made him do it, that Michael Jackson never did. Then I looked at it there. That's that's that was like a Reddit thread and has never really been proven, but it catches sure. fire. Um, the thing that the, 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 and and people say, well, maybe they collaborated on their stories. And the the problem is th- that I started to oh, think let me, of. Let me just say real quick. Yeah. As far as collaborating on the stories go, in the Oprah interview, that whole like collaborating the stories thing is kind of debunked. Sure, but you can understand where the questions are asked. Mm-hmm. And my the, the reason why I start to look into it, it's like there's a couple reasons. Like, and you think you said it. These are not actors, right? Mm-hmm. And you see, and, and plus the fact that I think Wade Robson's dad committed suicide. Mm-hmm. 
um, from all the things that have kind of gone down. And it's just the way that these and the, the thing that really got me was the rings, the rings, the, rings and the, the so fake marriage creepy, and all man. that stuff. Like, the, there's so much detail to it. And, and when you're going to fabricate a story like this, you could have fabricated a lot of those details and not put your reputation, not even more reputation, but even more stuff that people could have said, wait, you, you did that? Mm -hmm. You had to do that? Like, you could have scaled back on that because there's a lot of stuff. Like, it, it, there's details that I want to give on the air yet, you sure. know, if you haven't seen it. But just things that, that, that Wade Robson had to do that was a similar to what the other, the other guy did and... Sorry, the, the, my head's all just. It really, it really fucked me up watching yeah, it. But, it does. I think the but, other guy's name is Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy but, Safe Chuck. But yeah, Jimmy Safe Chuck. But the other, the other thing is that uh, you have to, you'd have to be so evil, mm -hmm. so evil to do this to a dead man. That was, let's say, what all, everyone else is saying: how great he was to children, how wonderful he was to children. Um, you'd have to be so evil. So vindictive for just money, yeah, to do it because this you, does you nothing for their career. No, just, it, it it hurts them, yes, very much so. So, it just the details what they did, like to come out okay, in the in and the, that's one thing in the Oprah thing. And I urge people to watch the Oprah thing too because she even says, like, you know, we're gonna get it on social media, we were all gonna get it. Um, these guys in in this world, in this day and age. And how much publicity they get and how much people see their faces and all that kind of stuff. What these guys will have to live with with Michael Jackson supporters for the rest of their life. Is it worth going to do this HBO documentary for like the little bit of money that right. they probably got? Not just these got guys. I don't think they got much at all, if anything. Not yeah. just these guys, their wives. Their right. wives, their, their kids, families. Their whole their families are now their putting whole in. Right. Families. Because the moms that both of them, I mean, especially Wade's mm. mom, right. who her family like practically disowned her. Right. And yeah. and the daughter who's like I wouldn't let her see her mom for so long. I mean, you know, what do you get out of it by by really? I mean, because it's it's not you, you're not yeah because there's no proof. There's no proof. You're not you're not you you're not gonna. Convict you, you know, after death. You're not. It, it, that's not going to happen. Wade Robinson already lost his case because he wanted to sue the estate. Right, and it was right? and it was not because he didn't have claims. It was because it was too late. Too late. Yeah, yeah. And the statute. The statute of limitations. Right. Now, so here's okay. So let me ask you this question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's just say your daughter um, it becomes an amazing, amazing basketball player. Right. right. And you know we'll put it in LeBron James or let's just say like a, a female and WNBA star is like sure. Hey, uh, and she's like, you know, 31. I know where you're going with it. No, I would not let him go near the bedroom. I wouldn't let him stay with him right? for at all. The parents are are, are, are criminals. Be, um, they're be, criminals. Yeah. Because my wife and I were watching it. She can't watch. She she bailed after the first step. She, she had, she had yeah. enough of it. She, it, it kept her hey. up, and she had nightmares about it. Yep. So, And we said the same thing. And I think that they even say it maybe later on in the doc. The parents are to blame. Yes. I mean, a Billion percent. There's fi finally at one point when they say like Michael Jackson came up to I think Wade Robson's mother and said I want to him keep him for, for a, year. a year. And she's like, No, you can't. He's my son. And he's like, I get what I want. She's like, Well, not this time. Right. Um, and and that's... but like the fact what when the one woman's like, Oh, and then our rooms just kept getting farther and farther apart. And that's documented by the way. Yes. That's there's proof. Yes. Like every you can go back and check hotels. They were in different levels every single time. And it's like, but what they also don't say, and and, and you got it down down the line in other reports, but not in the doc, is that Michael Jackson was, they sold their souls, is what happened. Mm -hmm. They basically, these people, it's like, hey, here's a lot of money, go down to Century City, go buy whatever you want to buy, here's a car, mm -hmm. do what you got to do, and I'm going to hang out, we're going to do some music, me and your son. Yes. And they're like, okay, because you're Michael Good. Jackson, and I got money now, and mm -hmm. I never had any money, you know, and they... And the, they the one family got a house out of that's it. That's right. Bought him a house. I think, I think though... What was soul. clear for me mm -hmm. from the doc also and why I just really... Have you watched the whole thing now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not the Oprah thing, but the four-hour okay. right. doc. It, it must be, if you're Wade, not as much Jimmy because I don't think that his career was as affected by his relationship with Michael. It but helped it. My, wait, Wade Robinson's career. So, talking about about so, so Jimmy's career, not as much affected. But when it comes to Wade, he must feel, like he mentions in the doc, so many different emotions at once and which is why i think it all came out the way it did where he did he testified on the stand twice we hear a little bit more about that but 
yes, this man was doing these things to you. And yes, at the time you were probably conflicted because you wanted his love and that was what he told you love was. Right. And that's what you learned since you were eight mm -hmm. years old. But you also owe your entire career to him. And he is the one who helped you be a choreographer. He is the one who told your parents that you could do all now, these things. Via and the documentary, it I'm, didn't really seem like Michael Jackson helped him be a choreographer. He helped him like dance and stuff, but he pretty his, much his, left his, him his connections to Michael Jackson, Jackson Michael. Yeah, helped and, him get the cake. It's too far to say his entire career. Mm -hmm. We yeah. don't know what would have happened without Michael Jackson. But that being said, I think he probably d does attribute a huge right. chunk of his success to yeah. this man. Here's my here's the biggest thing though too. It's like. On the on the, it's just these people who come out and defend and say, no, 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 he 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 didn't do any of these things, and they don't. Even, but none of those people go, yeah, but it's a little sketchy. It's a little that this, at the time, thirty one, thirty two year old man is hanging out like, like all the time with kids, with kids, and it's not like, Mr. Rogers. That's exactly who I was thinking of. Mr. He's not sleeping he's, in bed with little not, boys. He's not going on tour with with these kids. He's, he he does his show. He comes in. He says, Mr. Rogers was very different when, and he's not like. Spending time alone and having people sleep over his house, and it's like just because you love thriller, you got to open up your mind. You know, it's, just, it's weird. It's really weird that like this guy was hanging out with all, and it was not. Like, and, and well, yes, that's how he was. He was. A, he was a very peaceful. He came from a broken house. Mm -hmm. He came from a father who was mentally abusive to him and physically abusive, and, yeah, spiritually and, abusive, and, ma and made him feel. And he he de he destroyed this child. Mm -hmm. He destroyed Joe Jackson. Destroyed him. That normally, if you look at the way that people evolve, that go through mental, physical abuse, they don't come out the side like, "Hey, everybody, let's let's go and, and I'm, I'm going to open up an amusement park." And there's no fist, there's no damage whatsoever. So he was a damaged dude mm -hmm. who most likely, because like, dude, there is no physical, there's no proof. There's no proof. And that was the one thing a lot of people have tweeted at me, like, here's the facts of whatever. The FBI has investigated Neverland Ranch and never found anything. What are they going to find? Right. Like, wh what, well, it, they did find some things. They found a book of child pornography with a note of Michael Jackson's, mm -hmm. the note saying, like, I'm looking at this as artwork because of the beauty of a body, but not, but like not saying anything about using it as kitty porn, but it really essentially was. Right. They, did, they didn't find nothing they did find some things nothing, they found all the bells yeah. but they like, found all the hidden doors the they, thing, found, the they thing, found yeah, things it's true the other thing but it it's also, hard to prove all that yeah. via this you know what i mean totally. like it's not like yeah, uh, when you go to a mafia don's nothing. house but they didn't yeah, find so if you're mr rogers it's hard to find a smoking but, gun but yeah. in that situation right and you're mr rogers right who <clears> we we all would probably agree um was th this golden, you know, figure that that was it's never it's never really been some people some people had said had just said it because there was there was protests and stuff about him sure. too, but there was no allegations against him ever, right? Right. So let's say he was accused, you know, if he pays someone twenty million dollars to settle, then you're starting to go, well, Mister Rogers ain't clean, right? Why are you settling, right? If you are so Fight clean, it. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to hear. Well, I just don't want to deal with it. That does not look good. No, he's like you. If you are innocent, then fight it all the way to the you, end. And you say, have all the money in the world. To, right. Fight use it. that twenty to fight it. Yes. Don't use that twenty to pay someone off so they shut up. Correct. That to me goes. Ooh, that's that, that's dirty. Because you wonder what they had. I mean, and also you hear this this doc with the underwear story. Did you get to that, Christian? No. Okay. So there's a story yeah, in you it. Can tell it. There's a story in it where uh, I think it was Jimmy, not Wade. Was it Jimmy's story? No. With the underwear? I'm pretty sure it was Jimmy's. Where one of the boys, um, oh, yeah. long story short, after he had spent the night with Michael, he goes home. He's doing... It's Wade. It's because Wade. Because yeah. he had to go he, oh, to... Oh, he was like, on set? Yes. Okay. So Wade goes home or on set, whatever, and immediately gets a call from Michael's people being like, you have to come back to the house. Immediate. We're coming to send a car. He goes back to the house. Michael's like, what did you do with the underwear? What did you do with your underwear that you were wearing? Because it was the first time that Michael had, had, tried, to had tried to penetrate him. him. Oh, okay. Right. So, yeah. so he's like, "What did you do with the underwear?" And Wade's like, oh, "What do you mean? I just I brought it home, and I I think I wore it home." And Michael's like, "You need to go home and and, and destroy it. There could be blood in it." And Wade's like, "Oh, okay." Wade goes home, and luckily, like I guess his mom hadn't done his yeah. laundry yet, and he finds it, and there's blood in his underwear, and he mm -hmm. and he threw them out yep. or whatever it was like stories like that are so like detail, so specific detail. and how do you make that up but <clears throat> it's not just that i'm just wondering the other boy 
did he have something like that where twenty million do- where they gave him twenty million dollars because they knew that he had proof. Right. They knew that somebody was going to be able. What was there? Right. And here's the, the other thing, and I think I've said this from the right. beginning, is like, okay, well, so. The picture, sorry, to hold yeah, no, up, the picture, there was that thing that where the, the one kid who like disappeared off the map, and his dad also committed suicide, um, he d- detailed Michael Jackson's penis you yeah. know, and he said like this is this is what and then they took pictures and he was it was exactly what he said it was mm-hmm. you know and and it's like that kind of stuff those kind of details people i get i get liking an artist's music you know i get it but it's like it's there aren't any the thing is that what some of these people aren't doing that are just blindly defending them mm-hmm. they're not saying okay look it looks bad there are some things that they say that could be bad but I need more of the facts. It's, he didn't do this. He's an innocent man. How do you know? It's the same way that I can't say, I know he did this. Right. I don't know that he did it. I don't know. It sounds like he did. It sounds like he did. I just, I can't say that I know he did because there has not been any concrete proof. There isn't. You have these two two guys who are saying that they, they're pretty detailed mm-hmm. all the way through that I agree with you that it's, pre- I mean, you got to really come, you got to be pretty good to think of, First of all, you're putting yourself on a four-hour document, uh, document, um, documentary. Thank you, and you're sitting there for four hours. Well, they're probably sitting there for two days, way yeah. longer, way longer. But you're putting yourself under there's so much footage that if you're lying, you ha- your head's got to be going. Okay, I got to make sure I got all my facts right here. I said that he's going to do this. I said he did this. Wait, wait, remember that? No, no, I said he did this before. Because and not only yours, your mom's, everything, your sisters, everything. Your, your story, wife's. your story's got to be so because airtight, airtight. And, and, and here's the thing is Dan Reed, the, the director, has done this. I mean, he's he's a pretty talented filmmaker. I saw, right? him, I saw him Piers Morgan. What a tool bag Piers Morgan is. Oh, like Such the a worst. douche. Um, what did Piers Morgan do? I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish this thought. But, but he's done this before. Any good interviewer can start sniffing liars pretty well. Yeah. This isn't just like a 10th grader doing a school project with two guys that said they, that right. this happened. Because it's right? his rep on the line, it's too. It's his rep yeah. on the line, too. And it's HBO's rep on right, the line. Right. It's everybody's right. rep. Um, and I get what you're saying. Like, there's no concrete evidence or proof that he definitely did it. And there's no concrete. And he was acquitted. And he was acquitted twice. Yep. Well, sort of twice. I mean, he settled and then he got acquitted, right? Still acquitted. Um, yeah. The thing that that gets me in this whole thing is that each, both Wade and Jimmy, Michael Jackson exploited their weakness, right? And yeah. he did it with, like, Depth, yeah. like person, like it, he did it in such. Well, he vetted the families too. That's what that's yes. what the predators do. Yeah, like he 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 got them. He knew where to hit, yeah. what angles to do, and all that kind of stuff. And listen, you can say Michael Jackson can say all he want. I I've you know I kids made me th- because I didn't have a childhood. I was always going from show to show. I kids are innocent, and we wanted them. Kids also are scared and obsessed with you and don't talk. Right, and they're like, like well, the other the other thing that people said, well. And this is the stupid thing Piers Morgan said. He's like, he's like, wait. So Corey Feldman and which, by the way, Corey Feldman came back out recently and said that he can no longer f- defend Michael Jackson yeah. But, yeah. because he said Corey Feldman and Macaulay Culkin um, and a lot of other boys had had said that Michael Jackson never did anything. Well, yeah. Think about it. If you're Michael Jackson, you're surrounding yourself with a whole bunch of kids, and then you go, you know what? That Just kid. What I said. I'm going to hang out with that kid. Smart thing to do. I'm going to hang out with that kid, and then when they ask that kid, no, never hurt, never, never did anything to me. Plus, Macaulay Culkin and Corey Feldman, very high profile. Yes, you, that you, for a predator like that guy, they don't they he's don't no need dummy. it. You no, know, it's like it's like well, they never t- he never touched those other kids. What do you think he's doing? He's running around going, "Oh, I'm gonna grab you now. I'm gonna grab you. I'm gonna grab." You. No, he was he was cool, calm, and collected and calculated. And again, if he did those things, which again I believe that he did, well, and again, when, wait, sorry, real quick, again, his. He Michael Jackson knew the parents and knew how to play the parents right. in order for the kids to, and for he him to get away with it. became friends with them. Correct. That's what they said in any when single people, time. When people are like, there's no proof, there's no evidence, what are they looking for? A video? Well, I mean... But what, the, the, what, what, what constitutes... The, the underwear, for example, okay. right? But the, no, say, of, say it was his... Under, say we found the underwear and it had his own blood in it. Yeah. Is that proof? It depends on where the underwear was, how that, it was. If, if was there DNA, was there DNA from from Michael Jackson? Yeah, there's proof. Uh, if, if I mean, there's a, there's a lot of other things that they could have found that, that they didn't, and other things are more. Look, and I think that there were eyewitnesses with with maids and things like that, but who were also silenced. And yes, it's just it's it's really it's gross. Yeah, I mean, some the, of them the were silenced. Some gross. of them we hear in the second part come yeah. forward and are fired. I I just don't know. To me, and maybe this isn't the definition of the term, but to me these. This four-hour doc is proof. I agree. 
Yeah, it's not proof to me. Because I, it's just, I, it's and just, maybe by the technical term, yeah. but for me, that was the proof that I needed. That it, was To me, that's it, proof. It, Subjective. It, yeah. What I will say is it, it convinced me. It convinced me for sure. Like, I always had my – like, I was – to be honest, I was listening to Michael Jackson's music still afterwards. I don't know the, the majority of the details beforehand and all this stuff. And then when I heard these detail reports, I, I felt icky mm -hmm. listening it to it. I deleted play. it. I deleted it off of all my, my... It played at a bar oh. that I was at this weekend. Did you walk out of it? I did. Yeah. Good. Of, I think a lot I of people... I did. It, yeah. uh, it was actually at, um, at uh, Sam Rachel's birthday. Okay. Were they trying to prove a point or something? Somebody? I don't think most people noticed. Um, oh. It was like... A remix of a it was song, yeah, it was yeah. Song, but um, I, and honestly, I was looking around and not one person flinched. I think it's so ingrained in people. Yeah. Like, well, Darina, Darina, I think brought up brought it up to the other day where she said, um, you know, and it was, it's it's a it's a tricky conversation where she's separating the art from the artist, right? Which is again, and she said that there are there are other athletes, there are other musicians, there are other people who have who have done some pretty awful things, and we still listen to their music, still watch their movies, and she's not wrong. I just that I think that most of those, and there's something I guess about destroying a, chi a child's innocence to take advantage of children. Mm -hmm. To it, it's there's a little it's and it's not uh, it's again someone hits a woman, someone does some it, they're they're it's awful awful stuff that, that people are doing as well too. And is it is it forgivable? No, but there's just something about and again from being an uncle and uh, being a dad and it's. I just it, it just hit me to my core that you can really you could do that to a to a child you know and it's just it, and look the, the bottom line is if this is all true and we're all convinced it's just that the man was attracted to children and it's it's makes me ill mm -hmm. so anyway that's what I was talking about with the brains when you can't get in the brain of somebody no. like, like R Kelly you can't I have been trying to get in the brain of Michael Jackson and I can't because I don't share that no I. I I don't share that. Right. It's just, it's just, it's the whole thing where he was a very, like, damaged, damaged, damaged from his early childhood. That's why he kept saying, he don't, don't trust adults, don't trust your family, because he didn't. Mm -hmm. He didn't, because he, he was supposed to trust his dad. When he, when you're a child, you're supposed to ch trust your parents, and he didn't trust his dad because his dad was awful couldn't. to him. He no, couldn't he trust, couldn't yeah. trust his dad, and his family was they were competing with each other, and it was never like that that bond. And he was always the one pushed into the spotlight, and so his, he has his warped. And then he gets thrown into fame, becoming the most famous person in the world, and his his whole brain is just distorted, and that's the way he sees the world. And it's like you can't say, oh, well, he just loves children. He no. just—he's just so innocent. It's you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look at the damage past and go. There might have been some stuff going on. Yes, especially when you have these stories going on. It's and like especially when nobody's denying that he was sleeping in the same yeah. bed as kids. If yes. Michael right. says that out loud. No, even if you don't think that they were having sex, it's still nobody, weird. Nobody's denying that they were sleeping in the same right. bed and, yeah. as each other. Yes, yeah. and it's only, like, oh, he was—he wasn't weird. He wasn't weird. The man held an infant. Over a balcony yeah. right. with the feet dangling <laughs> like a lunatic. Yep. And no one even brings that up anymore no. because he, they, li they like beat it. There's a story. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. No, I mean, dude, listen, <clears throat> I think we're all on the same page here. And it makes it all makes total sense to me of how it's laid out and all of like the ancillary things like you're saying. Abuse as a kid, surrounding yourself with kids. He, I mean... To, to make that kind of music, you have to be a certain kind of genius. So it's not like he didn't have brain power. Of course he did. Right? Now, there's no, a he's story. a musical genius. He's so gifted. What we were talking there, about before about the way vetting and doing all that stuff, there was an evil intellect to that. Yes. There was yes. an evil intellect to everything that he was doing and, and making sure he cleaned cleaned everything up and to make sure that he did not get caught. There was an evil intellect to it, He it, and that's what he did. He was a, he was a smart, again, potentially evil dude. Yes. There's a story in the second part, uh, and I, Roxy will know what I'm talking about, where Wade Robson talks about going to visit Michael in Las Vegas. Um, he was there choreographing a Cirque du Soleil show, and I think Michael Jackson was there doing something, whatever he was living there, doing he it. He had, had, was living there with his kit. Yeah, but he was like doing a show, too, I think. And anyway, so Wade reached out. Uh, and they went over to visit Michael Jackson, and Michael Jackson just like chugged wine and got drunk and passed out, and the kids were just kind of there, right? Yeah. So it's obviously well, he Michael was going Jackson to do said, some... I, "I'm going to go upstairs for a second, and then just never came back down. Yeah, and it's the last time that we ever 
ever saw him. I, right. And I think he was just going through like some addiction, some alcoholism, whatever the case may be. But I think a lot of this did catch up with him. Yeah. I think mentally, a lot of it caught up with him. At least that's that. That was my thought in the whole thing. And Wade was like, I felt really bad for him. Um, when when Michael Jackson died, Wade talks about how he was in a dark place. You know what I mean? Because Michael Jackson had brainwashed these kids to be in love with him. And even though the sexual abuse, and they talk about the Oprah thing, is they ne- they didn't think it was sexual abuse until later on when right. they realized it was sexual abuse. Right. They thought it was love. I, yes. I still have also so many questions about, like, first of all, he has kids. Mm-hmm. Right. And they have, uh, like, Paris has said a couple of things that were interesting so far, if you guys have been following She's her. been defending him, yeah, of course. Yeah, but at first kind of wasn't. It was just oh. saying, like, give me space, um, which I understand. And then... And also about his past marriages, like, is is he bisexual? Is he only into kids? Those marriages is were a sham into, to, for but he, money. If and he's having children with them, clearly there's some kind of exchange going on there. I, I just have I have so many more questions, and obviously he's dead. So yeah. I, we, I don't know if we right. ever get those and answers. We would never get the answers even if he was alive. It's just, look, the whole thing is polarizing because like, you see a lot of different uh points of opinion and and like i said after i saw that just the first half i did it i did a lot of uh reading because i wanted to make sure because there were, there were both sides of it too and and there was someone that to be fair i was going through the facebook group and i wasn't listening to people just screaming out going because you're, 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 you're never you're going just, well, you're just yelling yes but there were other people hey, hey listen uh, if you watch a doc, if you didn't, just look at both sides, check this out, and look at all the facts that are in there. And I saw it. And there, there are interesting questions to be had on both sides because the problem, again, is is that there is stuff that you can look at Wade Robson and go, well, I mean, it's a little, it's a little interesting that he decides. Are you going to watch the second? Part? I'm going to get to it eventually. It's just the problem is like my my wife is just done with it, and like she she just, it, it what really, does she think? She thinks guilty for sure. Um, but but yeah but but same, same thing she and once for, you come to the, that conclusion it, it's it the four hours the part two is so much harder for I know me than the that's, what, that's what everyone says but my, when you know my, my wife and I were saying the same thing we were we were yelling at the at the parents the whole time yes. yeah me it was, too it, it was the the parents are are to blame it's like especially everything the that moms, happened yeah. especially the moms and I, whether they ever they listen to this or don't listen to this and they know this already but it should be said again everything that happened to your child is your fault Everybody. So take that to wherever you have to take it. And I don't care if it's harsh or not. Take it wherever you have to take it. Uh, it is your fault. I agree. You you could have protected your children. You didn't. You decided to yes. sell your soul. This sell is not a situation soul. in which somebody was kidnapped. No. This was a situation you, in which you somebody gave, was You gave up your seven-year-old yeah. to allow them to sleep in a room with with a 32-year-old man who, because he was famous and because you liked his music and because you were hoping that it could take you into a better place financially and you sold your, cho- your child. Don't so you? shame on you. Both of them. Yes. I agree. Yeah. All of them. It's, all it, of them. Yeah, all of them. But some of the, like, one of the dads that had mental illness and stayed home and begged them not to go. And right. the other one, I just, I, I'm not saying shame on the moms more because I, they're women. I'm I, saying shame on the moms more because they had a more active part I, in it. I will, right. Yes, but I will tell you this um, that, first of all, my wife in a million years wouldn't do that. But if she did, I would drive. You would stop her. And I would drive, I would fly, and I would stop them and yeah. say, What are and you I said, doing? I said, Can you imagine if Justin Timberlake, who has never had any. He didn't been walking around with young young girls like holding their hands, going to concerts with them and stuff, right? Too, and that was out, out there, and everybody saw that, right? He has never done that, but let's say that he was. And then my daughter starts singing at a talent show, and Justin Timberlake goes and sees her, and, and again, Justin Timberlake, who's never been accused of anything, says, "Hey, uh, hang out at my house for a little bit, and then I want your daughter to sleep in my room tonight." Yeah. And you say yes? Yeah. What if it's Britney Spears? No. No, you. I wouldn't let my daughter sleep in your room. Yeah. Like, no. It's my it's 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 my kid. Yeah. Get the fuck away from my kid. Get yeah. the fuck away from my kid. Get away from family. my kid. You're not yeah. You're I don't 100%. care who you are. I don't care what song you had. It's like no. Get away from my kid. You you're not going on tour with my kid. You're not saying I'll let him dance on stage with you and then we can talk about it and then he's gonna go to school. Stay away from my kid, you fucking weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. That's what if it is. You wanna, if you want to teach my kid how to sing and dance at a studio while I'm there, great. But you're not having your kid sleep it's in the weird, bedroom. Man. And, you it's know, weird, man. It's weird. The sister, Wade Robson's it's sister. It's more than who, weird. It's, it's horrible. It's weird it's, because it's, it's like when people are saying, like, oh, I don't know. If anyone else did it, 
You'd say it's weird. If Vin Diesel did it, what? That's weird. Yes. Why is Vin, D- why is Vin Diesel doing that? You know, if like if if like Retta was doing that, right. why, why is Retta doing that? So it's, it's, stop. What? What? If you're a parent too, the one red flag at the beginning is uh, the sister Chantel, and he asleep with Michael Jackson in the same room. Nothing happens. Then Michael Jackson says, "Oh, the family's going to Grand Canyon. I'd like Wade to just stick stick by. Well, right. Why it's not weird. Chantel? Right? And he's pushing all the girls. And it's and it's just I again." I want to know why, like, to where, it, and it, again, I know people are going to be yelling at us and tweeting and all this stuff too, the Michael Jackson supporters, and it's fine. But the question is when you do that, right? Not just because there was no proof, because he said it. Do you think it's strange? That's the question I'm asking you. Do you think it's strange that he did all this stuff? Not just, like, oh, he was a man child that liked children. Stop. No. Stop, because let me put yourself in this position too. Would you let your brother or your sister or your nephew or your nephew and niece's son, daughter, would you let them do it? Would you? Because I I I, I don't stranger. I don't agree with a stranger. Not not, not like not like a, an uncle, and even then I don't know. I mean, like my my, my brother obviously. Even even my, but I, like, honestly, I even don't my brother. S- I wouldn't like. The, I don't oh, know. Hey, Luke, I don't do, know. Do, do, do hey, do the kids want to sleep in our bedroom tonight? I'm like, why? Yeah. You don't. Have, you, like, you sleep Maybe on the couch. Maybe if they were staying with your family and you weren't there, but if you were, but, but yeah. Even, just, but even uh, so, it's like, why? Why yeah. can't you sleep? Let, you sleep in on the couch, and then she can sleep in your room. Yeah, sharing the bed right. under no. no circumstances. No way. It's, it's just it, I don't understand. And for the and for the, the mom, mom slept yeah. in the in the same hotel, like the same apartment in Century City, on a couch while her son slept in a closed door yeah, bedroom that's, with that's, Michael Jackson. That's on. That's on the parent. Like, that's on the. That's on the mother. Shame, shame on her. Shame on her. She knows it, but shame on you. Both. Them. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, no easy transition. And another, that another reason why I am believing them because the mothers did the doc. Yes. They, right. they know what. Man, what benefit, are they going to the get hell? out of it? This ruins their whole. Now everybody in the world knows what kind of parent you were. Shit, yeah. parents. Regardless yeah. of whether Michael did it or not, you still let your kid do this. Right. Nobody's dip- disputing that. Well, yeah. look, um, we 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 definitely we, let's let's talk about this Game of Thrones thing okay. quick. I know it's not a great transition out of it, but we do have we have our guests that are be coming in eleven thirty. So um, we want to make sure that we give them the the time. That is needed. So let's. T- Game of Thrones came out and said that, that I guess they're doing shorter episodes. So, well, so the first two episodes, and again, forty-five this, minutes. Uh, no, it's made fifty-five and like fifty-six or something like that, oh. which is basically the same runtime as the other episodes. What but here's the thing: about? people are yelling about it because it's a six-episode final season, yeah. and a, what they, what, two HBO, hours? HBO had sort of promised that we were going to get eight episodes. No, no six. six. Six episodes. Six. Wow. Mm-hmm. And we were promised like hour and a half episodes, basically. Oh, we were? Six. That's when what did they say HBO, that? HBO kind of came out and said all of these last episodes are like going to be mini movies, which, you know, like hour and 10, hour 20. So a couple of the later ones apparently are hour 10. So the final four episodes are 80 minutes. Yes. Okay. And the and then the indeed the massive Battle of Winterfell episode is rumored to run if, 90 minutes. If yeah. the story oh, gets out. told. Yeah. Why does anyone care? Ah, uh, because it's six minute, six episodes, and they want to, they want it to last as long as possible. I, I understand, but it's like you do. I understand. He, uh, you understand the entitledness of the. It's we not the entitledness. wanted more. Well, it's not your project. Right. Let them tell the this story, the story they, they want to tell. tell. No, I get that. I think you're. I think you're right, I, but I also understand when people are like, "Ah, oh, man, fifty four minutes." Yeah. Six. It's well. It's because we've been waiting so long, and we've yeah. been told. That's what I'm saying. I don't we've know. been when sold we been a bill that? of goods a bunch of times, really? man. It's been told. Listen, I've been talking about on TV talk for like two I, years. I, I'm not. You know I'm, not I mean? I, I'm not going to negate been, it. They keep know. telling like each episode is going to be so long and yeah. epic and stuff. And, and when the first ones come out and they're under 60 minutes, people are ch- right. justifiably like, but, uh, but then the last four. Right. Listen, I'll give them that. And again, but if each, but if each one making it, it's not your story. Right. But here's the thing. But to that promise, if each, but to that promise, Roxy, if they had never said a word, we'd be like, oh my god. Six wait, episodes, but, wait, but they told us they were going to be long. Right, I but, don't to, care. But, uh, but wait a minute. But to that promise, let's say each one they said was going to be a uh, uh, hundred and, and ten minutes each. Mm-hmm. People will be okay with it, right? Sure. It's essentially, what they're doing because the first two were fifty-five and minutes, then and then the next two are, are 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 what eighty minutes, and then the last one's going to be ninety minutes. So uh, if you balance it all out, you are getting longer. You are getting longer. I don't sure. disagree. Obviously, so. coming out of the previous conversation, I'm a little more heated. But this is the <laughs> kind of thing I'll say. What do you really want to get mad about in the world? Right. Is it the Michael Jackson stuff, or is it that you feel you deserved a longer Game of Thrones episode, so you're gonna throw shit into the void yeah. because you deserved I it? I don't know how, man. Do I don't know. I don't know how. I think people, people are, are more. Pissed. Are you really people pissed? Are pissed. Yeah, well, they'll get Twitter, over it. Screw this! I can't believe. Like, I won't watch it. Like, <laughs> it's okay to be. Just, watch it's okay to be stupid. a little disappointed yeah. to be like, oh man, I right. wish they were a little longer. Yeah. That's, that's all right. right. That's what I'm. That's how I feel. Disappointed. Yeah. 
fine. But, but is you know, that your project? No, no, You're really I, mad? What are you mad at? But in the 55 world? minutes. talking about yeah. Game of Thrones fans, people that it, like insulted my mother, father, my life when I didn't know what the Tower of Joy was. So. 55, I know. 55 minutes for the first two. Okay, cool, whatever. And then I get and then I get the next three or whatever for 80 minutes, and then the last one's 90 minutes. It's like, get over it. It's who cares? Mm -hmm. I'll be bummed for the first two, and then I'll be excited. Are you and you won't be bummed if they're awesome. If they're awesome, that's true. And if it's, it's you won't be bummed at right. all. It's like you're getting you're getting. Over, put it all together over like an eight hour movie. Yeah. So if you, I mean, because if you pieced it all out, you are getting Which eight. Is awesome. If you, I am if you bummed because I all out, eight episodes. So I am, <laughs> but, now I'm bummed. But I just lost two hours. But again, think about it though. <laughs> if you took out all, from all this time that they say, if you divided it all up to about fifty five minutes each, you'd probably get between eight and nine episodes. Mm -hmm. So it's you're just, you're just giving you longer chunks in certain ones. So it's. Uh, it's an exciting. It's it's exciting. It's right. It's not. It's not too far away. So it's, it's a month from Thursday. Thursday, Nuts. March fourteenth, Seattle, Washington. Myself, Mark Ellis, and Napsack, Columbia City yep. Theater. Mark Ellis, Live dot com, nine p.m. Well, March twenty third. We are two less than two weeks away now from the free for all, and Los Angeles, California. Forty people. Forty people. Downtown L.A. Two p.m. Forty competitors. Yeah, forty competitors. Make sure that you come and check it out. All going head to head to make sure to whoever wins this will get a shot at any championship of their choosing. So go and check that. Out. By the way, if you are a Patreon of the Movie Trivia Showdown, you can see Roxy's debut at the table. I'm a lot of people saw tweets. it. People like it yeah, so far. Between baby. Corruption and World's Finest, it was a great match, and Roxy called it. So go on over to patreon.com slash showdown. Check that out. And then um, also, we mentioned uh, well, Game of Thrones is during yeah. the same weekend of Star Wars Celebration. We will be there. You can check out Mark Ellis, Josh McCuga, and Ken on that Friday night, which is the April 12th. You can get tickets at MarkEllisLive.com. And you can also get tickets for the Schmodown the following week. Although there's really only like 20 tickets left for the That's Chicago awesome. Schmodown. So you, if you want to go ahead and try to catch that, it's the SchmodownLive.com. Okay, when we get back from the film The Mustang, Laure de Clermont Tonnerre. There's no way I pronounced that right, but we're going <laughs> to find it. French enough. Close enough. And uh, Matthias Schoenart are going to be coming in to talk about The Mustang. Very excited to talk to both of them. And Roxy is super excited. Already calling it one of her favorite movies of the year. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, when we get back, Collider Live. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself. We have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. Right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps for myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw, that's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Boom. Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. Boom. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. Okay. So check it out, subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, twist. and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT live. Jesus. We are live. We talk about movies. We answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box Imagine office to all your favorite money. superhero <laughs> movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me. And who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. Okay. I don't know. That's what happens when you watch Collider Movie Mall, right? Are you going to watch? You better watch. Go watch now. 
What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at okay. you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books it's because TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right <laughs> here on the Collider Podcast Fox. channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends, and tell their friends. And before you know it, it's oh, a pyramid show. scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider show personalities all the show time he right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell I you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted mountain. by myself yeah, and Mark tub. Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. And strange week. Strange week. Roxy got lost. Eric Griffin was on the road yesterday and Matthias Schoenart's coming in at 11.45. So we do not have the director. It's a, it's a, the, the, Matthias Schoenart is coming in, but he'll be here at 11.45. So uh, bear with us as we, uh, it's, it's, look, it's a live show. <laughs> Things happen. Things are moving, grooving. And, uh, you know, if you want to join my circus, you can just come over and do that. What the fuck? What's, wrong with, what's wrong with you? He's, it's just his. It's wrong with Makuga. He needs to stand it's up, happy. pull the chair it's up. Happy. Is this, what music yeah. is this from, Cody? This is from the recently released Captain Marvel. Thank you, Cody. You're welcome, Christian. Um, all right, so look, uh, I'm... I listened I, to your spoiler review on that, by the way. You guys did a good job. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Um, Collider.com, which, which is a company that we, we, we do business with from here to there, considering that we're on the, the network. We do a lot of business with them. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. So I believe... And correct me if I'm wrong. What? Um, Never heard you laugh like that. Yeah. Uh, so Matt Goldberg, who is the he's the writer that uh, I I get along with Matt very well. I agree with him never. Um, <laughs> I am always on the opposite side of him on all of his takes. I okay. I th I think he's a brilliant writer. I think he's a great writer. I think that he is a uh, he is someone that that definitely causes conversation. Mm -hmm. I think he has a great podcast with with Adam Chitwood that they talk about stuff on the Collider.com. I have never disagreed with someone more than I disagree with Matt Goldberg. He put together a list now of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, ranked from worst to best, and we'll talk about those until our okay. guest shows up. Okay. Um, and we're going to see if we agree or disagree with them going through, through the list. You and said including Captain Marvel. It's everything. It's everything updated now. And, and like I said, a list is a list. I, know, I don't do one of these things to where it's just like, you know, you're an idiot for putting it on there. I'm going to probably disagree with the majority of the stuff that he picks okay. because... Every single time he tweets something out, I'm like, well, I disagree with that. So these lists get made by one person, and he, does he pull anyone, or uh, he just decides? No, you know, the thing is, sometimes I think that they they poll people. So this might be a collective poll from Collider, but his name is on it, so I'm just going to tend to believe it's his. Okay. Um, and he, he said, I decided to look back at the films and rank them. So this, this, this to me, because I, I saw some of them, and I can't imagine that anyone else would do okay. this except Mac Over. Because I mean, listen, you got to give the dude credit. He loves to push the needle. It's it's his. He likes list. to insult TV it's, talk on Twitter. It's his list. Um, now he ranks Iron Man two as number twenty one, the last one. Now Iron Man two is not great. It's not great. Would I put it as the last one? Maybe not. I'd probably put the Thor Dark, Dark World. If Dark World is not your last one, I don't know you, how. All right, well, well, that's that's number twenty one, Iron Man two. But I can understand that one. Now, Roxy, you're gonna agree with this one, which a lot of people think is nuts. Bo -bo! He has, he's got Doctor Strange at number Beep, twenty. Okay, let me just say this about yeah. Doctor Strange. It doesn't crack my top fifteen. 
All right, but look, it's number as number, bad or good. See, no, like as good. I think it's a much better movie than a lot of <laughs> well, other this movies. Is the top worst. Yeah, the, I know. Yeah. So, so worse the first. At so a 21, 15, 14, 13. Doctor Strange ranks in twenty. I, 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 you guys are on the same page with him on that. I am completely against it. I, I would put that much higher. Now this one, I think he's out of his mind. I love the Incredible Hulk. That's number nineteen. I, I think it is, loved the Incredible I think Hulk. the Incredible Hulk like is a very underrated movie. Me too. It holds up. It it, it is a really great film. And number nineteen Let is. Let me ask you a question. Don't go back. Don't wait, go, don't, keep wait, don't, wait, don't keep scrolling. Don't keep scrolling. He says wait. it's almost unfair to. Can you guys go back to the? It's almost unfair to include the Incredible Hulk on a list of MCU movies since it was clearly added to the universe after the fact. So maybe he's talking about that, it more as an MCU film, like it's but worse. That's to be. not really true though, because yeah. like they they combine the whole Avengers storyline. Mm-hmm. To, at the end scene, sure. He yeah. says it's totally so dissonant from the other movies. Well, yeah, but well, there'd, but there'd only been there'd only been one movie before that, though. Let me I'm ask not, you a question. No, no, I know yeah. you're not. I Let me ask not. you a question. If Mark Ruffalo was in this movie, do you think it would always rank higher? I, I simply I, always blame it because of the Edward Norton yeah. effect, because he doesn't really exist in the rest of the MCU. Well, I also think the Hulk itself. I think the Incredible Hulk movie would have fared financially mm-hmm. a lot better had it come out like two, three years ago. Yeah, right. I, as opposed to the second movie out the gate. Because and we had still had that taste in our mouth from Ang Lee. Ang Lee movie, and he possibly, says that too. Yeah. Possibly, you're right, Makuga, that it would have done better. But mostly for me because I like Ruffalo's. Hulk better. I like his. Uh, that's I what I'm saying. He's, he's better, not yeah. just because like it's a stink from but Ed Norton. I actually like. His we do have to okay. move through this pretty fast because we're again. I think our guest is going to be here at 11:45. And this is this is to me lunacy. Again, his list lunacy. Ant Man at number 18. What? Yeah, Ant Man is an awesome Sleep movie. Ant Man is an awesome movie. It's my top five. And, and my top three. It's, it's in there for me as well too. I the the co- combination of the humor with the crime. Wow, he liked Ant Man and the Wasp better than Ant Man. That means which is even more that's lunacy. Bonkers. Um, and so. The, there you go. So number eighteen is Ant Man. I think that's and then Ant Man of the Wasp at seventeen. Wow. I would put like, Ant Man of the Wasp to me. I did not love. I did. It, everybody was handing out jokes. It was very similar to what I thought of Guardians too. So uh, seventeen is 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 okay to put that one. But Ant Man is a crime. Thor at number sixteen, mm. th- ranking Thor pretty low. I didn't see the thing is with Thor. I'm not going to push back too hard on the first Thor because to me, Thor had the Cat Dennings effect. The yeah. humor in that movie was so bad. It's um, an only important I, effect, No, yeah. I'm totally fine with the first Thor being right where it is. Yeah, it's fine. And Thor then, is such a the, great addition to the, the Avengers. Problem is it's this. not. Yeah, this then, is the problem. Well, then he ranks the Dark World at number fifteen. So saying that the Dark World is be- is better than the Keep first Thor is ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. That's insane. Yep. Thor: The Dark World is one of. I think I rank that lower than Doctor Strange. Yeah. And you know how much I dislike Doctor Strange. And the next one, so, not a good movie. so now 14 is Captain Marvel. Right. There are movies that I already know that he ranked higher than Captain Marvel that I think he's uh, on a different, I still different page. The only thing on this list I haven't seen is Captain Marvel. So. Captain Marvel's right there at number 14. So that's okay. This is this is then this is where I, I want to this is where I, I want to arrest no, go back, go back. This is where I want to arrest him. Um, 13 Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> It's ridiculous. What? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Avengers Infinity War to me He is... says on the one hand, Avengers Infinity War is loads of fun, and it's staggering in its ambition. He knew this was going to piss people off. Yes. He knew yeah. it was. That's well, you have to start it. with on the one I hand. Can see him, I can see him cracking up as he's writing, go, oh, watch this shit. Woo! And he throws in number 13. And <laughs> Do that again for me. Look at it. Here we go. Woo! And that's, <laughs> I, can, I can see it. But number 13, I, I can't even talk about it. It's, it's, it's insanity that it's number 13. Absolute uh, Number 12, Civil War! Uh, that, I mean, I mean this, come on! What this are you to doing? Me, this to me is even more insanity. Nuts! This, this, those are top five. Civil okay. War top is five. the best. I might Civil be... War is the best. It's, it's, it's in my top three. I'm, it's so good. It's okay, so good. I love C- Civil War. On, and I know a lot of people like live for Winter Soldier. I'm not a big Winter Soldier fan. I love Winter Soldier. I know. And I know, for a long time. I know I'm in the minority on that one as I get shit for it all the time. Yeah. But Civil War, I mean, my goodness. It's great. 12. It, it, well, it was the Avengers movie a lot of people wanted. And I think it's the yeah. best. Keep going down. Keep going down. 11, see, Spider-Man Homecoming is way up, way higher for me. It's in my top, uh, at least top seven for for that one. It's the best Spider-Man movie, I think. And I think you have too many movies in yeah. your top seven. No, I said top five before. No, top seven. Ten, Guardians of the Galaxy. I, that one, to me, Guardians of the Galaxy in the top ten, I can understand well, it. I, I, I like it a lot. Um, so I wouldn't it's put it. confusing, in, though, yeah. Christian. I know. You, we, I know. We're, you know he hasn't said the second one yet. Which is nuts. Which is nuts. That's in my, that's in my, that's in the bottom, the bottom 20 for Ugh. me. 
Uh, and then nine. Iron Man 3, again, I think he's pushing buttons here. Oh, my God. Iron Man I 3 don't like Iron Man 3 Iron at Man all. 3, my Iron Man 3 is not a good MCU movie. It is. I've said it a million times. It's a good Shane Black movie. I it, disagree with that. I've disagreed every time you've said that. But, but they've changed. They retconned all of it because that, because of that fact. A lot of it, they, don't, they pay attention to none of the stuff that they even set up in that movie I because that they knew movie. it didn't make sense. Yep. It's a good Shane Black movie. It does not tie all the stuff that they did in that movie. They said, oh, yeah, all that stuff we I did in Iron Man 3. That that's not just feel. That's it's fact. No, I, I about the Shane Black part. I know yeah, you feel but that. I'm saying, but if you if you go back to everything, they just retconned everything. So this list is about MCU movies, not movies. Mm -hmm. If it was if it was best movies, I, I read the list. No, I know, but I'm saying if it was best movies, I would say okay, I can understand that because this movie is a well put together film, but an MCU movie, no, not in the top ten. Agreed. Sorry. Next one. I don't. Thor Ragnarok. I'll give you Thor Ragnarok. I really love. You think eight's a good spot for? Him? I think eight is a great spot for yeah, Thor Ragnarok. I like that spot for Ragnarok. I think Ragnarok was the best eight. Thor movie, hands down, hands down, the best yes. movie that the that in the Thor franchise. And I think that uh, it was just put together very well. I think that it gave Thor the most character that he had in all the films and gave him a little bit more life. So I'll I'll give you I'll give you eight on that one. Sure. This to me, yeah. How you rank Avengers: Age of Ultron? Before Civil before War. Before Infinity War. Yeah, before Infinity War. What? This movie sucks. Before any of the things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. Hold on. I don't, I don't say it sucks. sucks yeah. it's not but good. it's definitely in my back half. It was, yeah. it was, my a, back it was a mess. It was in the bottom 20. I'd rather me. watch Incredible Hulk again than Age of yeah, Ultra. 100%. 100%. And Ant Man. And Ant Man and the, the Lost. Only thing, strings. Yes. The only good part, James Spader. Straight strings. strings. And, That's pretty and good. Ultron himself was just underused. That's the top 10 for Ultron. Yeah. Do me a favor. Whatever he's smoking, you should start reviewing that on a yes. new weed oh, show. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Black Panther. Okay. Number six. It's I'll, six? Man, I, I like Black, Black Panther. Panther a lot. I'm not I don't know if I put it in my at my six. Mm. I probably put it in the top ten. Okay. Maybe me too. fifteen. Okay. But but uh yeah, definitely top ten. Okay. I and the music alone is worth ranking, but not yeah. six. Now, Winter Soldier to me was my number one for a very long time. Um Which is number five. Number five, putting it in the top five at least, okay. Okay. All right, so it's in your top five. Winter Soldier. I'll give you, I'll give you Soldier. Anybody's five. top five can be. Yeah, you, you can yeah. maneuver it around as long as it's in there. That's what fine. Speaks to you. It's fine. So uh, five, four. D g d Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. At two, at four. Ah. Sorry, uh, yeah, at four. <laughs> Ahead of the first Guardians. I, uh, what? Hold it together, Christian. Keep it together. Okay, listen. What? I know you hated it. What? I I liked it, but it not top at five. four. Not at four. What? <laughs> Top five? <coughs> How? Did, I mean, hey, what are you doing right now? Nothing. Want to tell a joke? Sure. How about you? What are you doing? No, nothing. Want to tell a joke? Hey, coffee person. What are you doing? Nothing. Want to tell a joke? That's our movie. I loved it, but top five is crazy. Hey, yeah. yo. <laughs> Ugh. It's his list. It stinks. I will say this. My two favorite innocent tweets I've ever sent out are, what's wrong with The Last Jedi? Question mark. Just like that. And, huh. I actually really enjoyed Galaxy. It's according to the top Galaxy five? Volume 2. Not top, top five? five? It's not top no, five. No, not top five. It, it might be it. top 12. Wait, I want to see what's number three. Me. All right. Keep going. Iron Man. All right. I'll give, I'll give you Iron Man in your top five. So sure. Uh, Winter, but I'll give it to you. Winter Soldier, I, I wouldn't put it in my top five, but Winter Soldier and Iron Man in there. Okay. Okay. I'll give you the Roka. Okay. Next. The Avengers. The first Avengers, I think that the first Avengers is the second best Avengers movie. Agreed. Um, so and it also, but also when you go back and watch the first Avengers movie, you realize how good Civil War is and how good Infinity War is. Yes. As compared to right. just the Avengers. And I think of Civil War as an Avengers movie. I know that it's yeah, not, but it's that's... Not, but yeah. it, it is. Yeah. No, yeah, but it, it, that's why I said before. It, it's like the best of... It's yeah. one. Of, it, it was the Avengers movie everybody was looking forward to right. before Infinity War. Yeah. Now, that only leaves one movie, and I like this movie, but number one is... What? The Captain America, the first Captain America. What? Like the first it's, Avenger? It's, it's easily the, like, if Again, you were ranking same thing the, first as I three, said. the first three Captain Americas, right? Yeah. This is the you would rank them differently, but we rank, but for me, I have Winter Soldier, Civil War, and then Captain okay. America. I have Civil War, Winter Soldier, and, and, and that's then, what he has too. Yeah. Right. like, so many spots down. I mean, Captain yeah. America is good. I get, but that, the same thing I said about wow. the first Avengers. When you go back and look at Captain America, you realize how good you had it in Winter Soldier and Civil War. This I makes wonder. no sense to me. It's his list. Look, it's his list. I think that uh, it just it, it just it just makes me realize that 
I am correct in that I will never agree with Matt Goldberg on, on yeah. anything. I need to yeah. go and see. Good writer, though. I need to really go and see Captain Marvel because I, I'd like yes. to put together Mollist on this one. Molistificent? Molistificent. Molistificent? Sure. Um, because, I, I mean, I'm obviously very interested and I'm very intrigued and I really want to see this. But also, I, I need to see where this like ranks in my thing. Do you know what I mean? Now it's become what, this Captain awesome. Ra- yeah, Jay now it becomes Jay. this like awesome ranking system, and I dig it. I don't know. I mean, like, like that was it was. I think I'm gonna rank mine today. Yeah, we should. Well, you know, what we should do. We should do a ranking. We should do a ranking on Collider the show. Life? Yeah, we should do a ranking on the show where we just do after uh, maybe maybe after maybe after Infinity uh, after Endgame. Endgame maybe after Endgame we do it because it's it's right around the corner. Hold hold out to do it, but like, mm. yeah, I. I, I it's mean, an easy plug in. I gotta get we gotta get him on the show. Who <laughs> Goldberg? You got it. Yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I need him to explain himself. Like I said, he's a very he's a brilliant writer. He's a mm-hmm. very good writer, and he does and he does he does things to where it always brings up conversation. You want it? You scream at the screen as you're reading a lot mm-hmm. of stuff, and it's also I think sometimes he pokes the bear. Oh yeah. But I'm the bear in this situation. Yeah, man. I mean, I do. I do well, like the, the internet fact. was the bear yesterday for this list. I don't think yeah. Doctor Strange is he the worst it. one, but I I definitely don't put it in twenty. Like, Twenty? I mean, come on. The worst 20? one is Dark World. It's yeah. so bad. I, it's, it's funny not... when I, I I liked it the first time I saw it. You and did? I, and it, yeah, I did the first time I saw did it. Did you rewatch? I re- yeah, and it wasn't. It, it doesn't hold up. I just I think I like because because I really, Kat Dennings, who I like as an actress, I, could, I can't stand her in those movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's an amazing actress, and she those is. movies do not no. service her well. Because I think that she suffered from the problem that I have with like Guardians two and Ant Man and the Wasp. She was the first. She was like the the beginning of the. Tell these really ridiculous jokes. The same thing that Oscar Isaac was doing in Last Jedi. Mm. It's like that type of stuff. It's like it's like come on, it's, come it on. Doesn't come service on. Natalie Portman either. Natalie Portman was <laughs> sleeping through both those movies. She, she slept through a lot of movies. She, well, she did rough. not. She wanted nothing to do with either, no. because you know this, with Dark World it was got Patty Jenkins was supposed to direct mm-hmm. that one. I know. And because of this, she was, and after Patty Jenkins left the project, Natalie Portman's like, oh, I don't really want to do this. Yeah. So she, you could tell. You, you and he's and I love that Thor has to like bring down the world to save Natalie Portman. I'm like, I mean, I might bring down an Orange Julius to save Natalie Portman. <laughs> and as far as that character went, you know, what yeah, I mean? Jane, Jane, just, Jane the whatever. No, 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 Jane, yeah. whatever her name is. Right. Speaking of Natalie Portman, did you guys see? Uh, did you, have you watched um, Vox Lux since it's been out? No, no. I still haven't watched. You gotta watch it. I want to. Okay. See, you you get you get disturbed by movies like pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Um, not that I want you to be disturbed, but okay. I'm just. Just preparing you, okay. For, and I prepared everybody for the opening. Do you have a screener for this? No, the screener's the screener's been done for a while. It, it, it was it was a uh, this one was like a link. Oh, okay, and inspired, it. but um, but it's out now, and it's oh. something that you could watch with uh with money. your with money. Would Amanda, sure. what would Amanda like? Think about this. It's dark, man. Does she yeah. does she like dark stuff? She does like crime dramas, man. This she is, likes her darkness. This is dark. Okay. I mean, this is dark, and yeah. it's, it's it's. I feel like it's flesh and bone in the vein of that. Oh well, the story itself, flesh the story itself, Me like, like I've yeah. told people, it opens up with a tragedy that is very hard to watch in the beginning, and then through that tragedy, this pop star is kind of created, mm-hmm. and for the first half of the movie, you see her as a young kid trying to deal with this tragedy, learning how to become a musician, yeah. right? And then it just smash cuts to Natalie Portman now. Years after this, and very similar to what we're talking about here too, with the with when tragedy hits you as a kid, as a child, w- what it shapes you into as an adult, and that's what you see of her later mm-hmm. on. When a similar tragedy happens again in her li- in her life, not necessarily directly to her, but to where it relates to her. Um, How come this didn't get much like more buzz? It's dark, I- man. It's yeah. dark. And okay. it's dark. It should have. I mean, I, I. It was in my top ten last year. It's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. It definitely is. And the funny is thing it is, because that one song. Well, I love. I love that song. There's I no doubt about it. it. But the funny thing is, at the end of the movie, when I first saw the movie, I didn't like it because it ended. It's. It's the last twenty minutes is just Natalie Portman singing in concert. Yeah. But then I rewatched it and I go, well, wait a minute. This all leads in it's very similar to kind of with Bohemian Rhapsody. I was just going to say it sounds Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, but the difference is that Bohemian Rhapsody leaves you with this kind of good feeling. Right. That's where this, it just you under, it's more therapeutic for the watch because of what you've gone through with this character and you're understanding where she is. Um, but speaking of Bohemian Rhapsody, I think there's there's rumors that a sequel is being talked about. Did really? you see this? Can you bring up Bohemian Rhapsody too? I'm not. I'm not kidding. Oh my god! I'm, I'm serious. I saw it. I don't know how. Talk about felt. I don't. I, you wouldn't want it to see a, 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 a sequel. A Bohemian Rhapsody sequel? Like you mean after Fred? I mean, 
what? I mean, after Freddie's gone, or maybe leading up to it, right after. Uh, look, but look, the last thing we see is them. A put Bohemian the Rhapsody sequel. Why stop with just one Rolling Stone? See, look, everyone's talking about this. Why stop with just one? Bring up the Rolling Stone one. And the movie made like what seven hundred million dollars or something Crazy. ridiculous. It made something. Yeah. It made a lot of money. So you can understand why they would do it. And you, and you know, the guy won the Oscar for. It. Could they? Is he signed up? Can you zoom in a little bit? But what would it be? The Oscar it's a question. Gilded Queen by uh, it's a question. biopic Bohemian Rhapsody may have a sequel in store, according to page six. It came from Rudy, whoever a director. Uh, I shouldn't say whoever. D Dolezal, a director behind many of the band's videos and a close friend of Freddie Mercury. To be clear, we have no idea whether or not it's true. And it's, even if it's being discussed, it doesn't mean it ever happened. So, but that doesn't mean we can't try to imagine what it might look like. And as we're doing this, this is Rolling Stone. So here's five different potential directions it could go. This is what this is what Rolling Stone says. Right. Can you go down? And a I will bit? say there's six years between Live right. Aid and when he does pass, but we do see that. Okay. Yeah. So so this is what they they suggest. This is nothing that is locked down. Bohemian Rhapsody ends with the group's triumph set at Live Aid, but they left on a ton uh, out of the uh, actual Freddie Mercury story. The first sequel could. Could, should take the Godfather to approach by toggling back and forth between Freddie's pre-Queen life and the events of 86 through his death in 91. Um, it could be dramatic. It's interesting to do. The events of 86 to 91. Could go down a little bit more, please. To Five years after. Let's see, number two. No, keep going down. Uh, oh, there you go. Queen gets some bad, some bad company, or not all right now. This one will begin with the Freddie Mercury tribute show at Wembley Stadium in 92, and then get into the dilemma that Brian May, Roger Taylor, and John Deacon faced in the aftermath. How can they possibly carry on with Queen without Freddie? It's interesting, um, because that, that I wonder if they can if they don't get Rami Malek back. Right. I don't know. I don't know if they could do it. I mean, there's like five different ideas. Like, you can check out the Rolling here's Stone. Here's kind of the funny, you, you mentioned it too, is... What do you think our world would have been like had Godfather come out, been this huge hit, and then we had to discuss, like, oh, a Godfather 2? What right. are they going to do? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we well, probably. The difference, though, with that, though? There's a book and there's IP. and Yeah, and, and, and it's fictional. Yeah. As oh, opposed yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Right, this is, uh, we can't, like, you Good can't point. make Solid up a, yeah. what happened. But it, I'm sure there is an interesting story there about what happened, but I don't know if I want to see a. After Freddy's Gone movie. Or there's more stuff, you know, leading. I mean, look, maybe it's the stuff that everybody complained about not seeing. Yeah. Maybe it's the stuff about his, his struggle from what happened. But then Ma I don't know if I want to see a movie of what they left out. Right. <laughs> I, I, I that's, love the movie. That's, what, that's, that's, that's how I felt. I didn't need to see all that stuff. Because it's really cool lately because my daughter is like becoming obsessed with Queen. That's she, awesome. She loves Did like she see the movie? Amazing. No. Too I can't, young, right? I, I, I think I'll show her the end scene, the Live Aid stuff. I've shown her the actual Live Aid thing, but she, she loves she listened. How old can you see this movie at? Is uh, this a thing? I, 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 yeah, I'd wait a little. Nine? Nice. I would wait a little bit. Um, my... My thing was that you, like the other day I was walking to the house and I hear her going. She she goes hey, <laughs> and she did the whole thing. Uh, well, I can't remember. Ayo, ayo, ayo. I'm doing, I'm doing uh, Beetlejuice right yeah, now, yeah. but you know I always get them confused. But she was doing the whole thing, and it was just really cool to see. And she's singing Bohemian Rhapsody, and and she loves. She can guess all the Radio Gaga. She, the only one she doesn't like is Bicycle because Freddie Mercury shits on uh, Jaws and Star Wars in the, in the thing. She likes. Does she really? She likes the music of of Jaws, and uh, she likes uh, and she loves Star Wars. So she doesn't want to. She only hear I'm, Freddie Mercury shitting on. I want to look up. Sweet, yeah, it was. Yeah, when did true. Wayne's World come out? So 92. 92. That, okay, so was, I was 10, yeah, yes, right, in yes. 92. And I remember when Bohemian, they were like jamming to the end of Bohemian Rhapsody in Wayne's World, right? Here we go. Here we go. Nice. Let's do it. Hey, Matthias Schoen are joining us today. Good to meet you. How are you, sir? Yes. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, Riley, we're probably going to, uh, how much time do we have? Please? I, I like the know. denim on denim. We call that All a right, Canadian tuxedo. All right, so we got it for nine tuxedo. minutes. We got nine minutes. <laughs> it's eight I'm minutes. Not supposed to do no, that, it's right? good. No, you're good. good. Yeah. All right, so we, Roxy, we have we have eight minutes. Oh, we all have right. Eight minutes now. So uh, the the star now of the Mustang is joining us. Uh, if you don't mind, sir, if you could oh, grab of us. course. Before we get into this interview, well, this is the thing that I wanted to say to you because I've I've been wanting to meet you for for a while. I think you're one of the most talented uh, people working today. I think that you are. I've said this before. He um, said it when you weren't sitting there, so you. Know I did. He's saying that we didn't say that. I know. I said I said it yesterday. I said it yesterday too. I saw. I mean, there was. Um, it was far from the maddening crowd. Was was one of those movies to where when I when I when I saw you in that, I had seen you in other stuff too. You just got that thing, and it is so. You're just engaging the, from Red Sparrow and everything else that you did. And I'm, I'm a, it's a pleasure to have you here today. I want to talk more about about the film, but I just wanted to let you know that I think that it is so good. Sometimes when you see a lot of times, I feel that what Hollywood does is they put people in these positions. 
sometimes to fail to where they say, look, this is going to be your star. This is going to be your star, and not enough people earn it. I believe you are earning it. I believe you are getting to that place to where you, you know more people should see what you're doing because you're doing really great stuff. So I just wanted to tell you before we started here today. Thank you so much. No, uh, Roxy, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, so I've, I'm obsessed with this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of the year, The Mustang. I absolutely adored it, and I had no idea about this program going into it. This uh, horse, what was the name of the program that they... Well, I don't know what the specific name is, but for me right. it was it was a surprise as well when I read the script. So you like, had no idea? No, not at all. Wow. So how did you, so for anybody who doesn't know, there's this program um, in prison where you can, they pair you with a horse almost and you learn how to train a Mustang, you get your own, and they're in California, Arizona, all over the place. So did you talk to anybody in this program? Because how do you of learn course, about of that? Of course, yeah, yeah. We, we, we went to visit three maximum facility, um, three maximum security prisons. Um, sat down with inmates, some that were part of this program. Actual, um, actually, a, a couple of extras on the, on the movie were um, former inmates wow. who uh, who participated in the program. Oh. So we had constant feedback about what was you know what was going on, what what their experience was, and and it's one of the most successful rehabilitation programs. The percentage of recidivism is is like has never been smaller than in in that program. Did you get a sense of why? Uh, well. I mean, yeah, I've, I have a notion of why. I think, uh, yeah, I think that this 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 interaction between this this animal that symbolizes, you know, um, sincerity, um, non-judgmental interaction. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's there's an, there's a, there's an affection component, there's a tenderness component, and I think that that yeah, that definitely has a has a healing quality. In the movie, your character has done some pretty tough things, some things that are really yeah. hard to stomach. <laughs> and we're supposed to kind of root for him and love him anyway. As an actor, how did you lead that balance? How did you walk that? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Well, I think it's it's always, uh, at least what I try to do for myself, is, is not judge my character. Uh, because if I judge it, I exclude so many possibilities. Um, people can have a perception. People obviously have, have a, um, you know, a, a moral... Um, judgment about the character but for me I, I, I just have to stay away from that um, and, and I have to look for to make the contrast as big as possible and and so yeah is he a bad guy not yeah he's done bad things but that does that necessarily mean that you're a bad guy that's an interesting question it's not for me as an actor to answer that question but it's interesting to portray a character that definitely open opens that debate and has people uh, think about that well is that why you like to I mean again I, I feel that when you get movies with like the smaller budgets and you, where you can really explore character more because sometimes when you have the real big budget movies a lot of times a lot of the villains it's kind of like black and white it's like that's a bad guy you know it's what you're saying there to where you really have to explore it it makes it more human so do you think that you get more opportunities to do that in in movies like this to where the script really calls for that or could you do it with both it just depends on maybe your take the the, the director's take yeah because if you, if you look at for example the dark knight what, what yeah. christopher nolan and, and heath ledger did with with the joker yeah. i mean they, they opened that you know they they, they reversed the, the hero anti-hero um archetype um so so i i think it's it's possible but it, it's true that within you know independent um, cinema, there, there's more space for that exploration. That's for sure. Do you have because you've done a, a lot of independent stuff? Do you is that somewhere do you you that's like kind of your playground? Do you want to do more like the stuff that television allows us to do a little more exploration into character as well yeah. too? Is television something you want to get into? Are some of the big budget stuff? Are you are you? Some I'm, I'm 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 you know I'm open. I'm, I'm I want to discover. I want to change. I want to move. I, and and so I'm I'm open to new experiences. So if, if they're you know, challenging and, and exciting, and I have a very playful approach to. Yeah. Uh, even though, like, my parts look very serious and <laughs> dramatic, and it's crying. But I have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have a playful approach. I want to. I want to enjoy myself, and I want to do things I've never done before. So if I could be part of a superhero movie and and have a, a very meaty, consistent, fun part in it. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, That's the not? dream, superhero. No, it's not my dream. Right. No, I, just I, the role's got to be right. Yeah, yeah, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily define it as a dream, but right. it's, it's just, yeah, I want to do stuff that I've Star never Wars. done before. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Why not? You, you said you, uh, you visited maximum security prisons yeah. and stuff like that. What's, what's the sense of walking into a place like that? Because I, I, I'm somebody who's never been to one <laughs> and don't want met, to. Yeah, and don't <laughs> want to. You know, what's the, what's that, that feeling that just like that, you know, that tension, whatever, when you walk in. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, yeah. That's that's 
probably what rock bottom looks like. Yeah. You know, that's when people... So you, you meet people that, you know, uh, you see different, you know, forms of desperation, the different forms of hope, different forms of fear. Um, so those are places where you get to see, you know, uh, intense uh, <laughs> intense <laughs> aspects of, 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 of humankind and human nature. Um, yeah, then we went to Solano Prison, to St. Quentin in uh, High Desert. Uh-huh. And some inmates that we were able to talk to were uh, maybe had a shot at parole. And then in the high desert, we went to visit inmates that would never come out. And, and uh, yeah, not, not, you know, not, 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 yeah. Were they willing to give you the information you needed as a performer? Or were they kind of reserved because they know you're making a movie no, because, about this? No, because the guys we were talking to were people that signed up for rehabilitation programs. Mm-hmm. And they, they've been working on themselves for like two, three years. And they were happy to share uh, their experience because they were really, you know, working on transfer, transforming themselves and bettering themselves, and they wanted to share their experience because they, they 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 felt that they were contributing to a movie that was, you know, kind of talking about them and 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 the the, the fact that we, you know, were were out there um, for that very reason was was kind of inspiring to them, and and they wanted to be very generous towards us. Well, the movie is called The Mustang, and it is in select theaters March fifteenth. That's right, it's coming up March fifteenth. Go and check it out. The star of the film, Matthias Schoenart, joining us today. And you got to come back because I got so much more yeah. that we got to talk to you about. This so, is a so, must-see yes. movie. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, no, I saw a Belgian hero. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're Cody, play, what, Cody, what play, play the clip. What is that? Oh, you're he was sitting he here. Was sitting, he was he came in. Here. Here. You got it, Cody? Month Month ago? Ago? Want some cookies? I said, yeah. You want a glass of milk? I said, yeah. <laughs> he told he told a story about blood sport of this whole thing, how he got the role, and it was yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, you can watch the clip. Uh, it's on YouTube, but want it's a, yeah. He was he was. He was yeah, something else, man. He was he was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he was awesome. He's a original. And, and listen, yeah. you were awesome. He's thank an OG. you. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming in. You got to come back in again, please, and guys. Once again, make sure you check it out. The Mustang, and that is March fifteenth, coming out in theaters. Thank you guys so much for joining us here live, Collider Live, and we will see you tomorrow. Check out the show on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us here on the YouTube's, and we will make sure. Hey, look, once again, February March twenty third. At the Downtown Theater in L.A. Get your tickets at ShimonLive.com, and we'll see you tomorrow.